one. Off the mark, buddy. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everybody, then. Welcome back. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you might be watching this back later on during the week. Uh, and good morning, Hatham. Thanks for jumping on with us this morning, morning buddy. Man. Uh, coffeed up, I see. Tea. Coffeed up. Good tea, man. Tea. Good man. Oh, you're tea, on the tea, tea are you? Yeah. yeah? Nice, nice one, mate. Uh, nice one. Nice Start the deal. That's it. Start the day off right, buddy. Start the day off right. What? How's things over your way, then, buddy? How is things? What's going on? Have Good. We got, um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. As, on. as you yeah, know, absolutely. Recovering from the old, um, the old COVID nineteen at the minute. Ah, uh, the the, um, the COVID kid. I'm in. Um, <laughs> I'm in what we call COVID jail at the minute, which is also my flat. <laughs> um, <laughs> sitting in the corner. Just, yeah. Just getting on with it, really, like that. That's it. Just, just ride the wave, buddy. Taking well, it easy. <laughs> speed, speed. Yeah, uh, pl plenty of rest, mate. Plenty of rest. Hot and uh, yeah, rest, speed, that's the speedy way. recovery, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely, buddy. And uh, like you say, probably plenty of Netflix as well. Oh, mate, you've got no <laughs> Keep idea. Yourself busy. <laughs> Disney Plus as well. To be fair. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got plenty up, to man. catch up on that on there, mate. That's for sure. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely, buddy. Well, I'm glad you're. I'm glad, I'm glad you're certainly coming off sort of like the back end of it now, anyway. And I'm, yeah. I'm like I say, I'm glad that you feel starting to feel a little bit better, anyway, and a little bit more, a little bit more yourself, and a bit more human. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, no. sounds like it's been a little bit of a week. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I for now, yeah, yeah. Um, right, guys. So um, we're just going to be sort of carrying on, keep the ball rolling from where we were last week when we were looking at. Um, we we, we look quite a lot at sort of skeletal muscles and stuff like that, how the body works a little bit more, and sort of how you might. Um, address meeting somebody for the first time in like a fitness environment, you know, if you were coming into a gym for the first time or if you were the instructor and you were expecting somebody in for an induction where you're going to show them round or, you know, maybe you're just um, going up to them on the gym floor and introducing yourself for the first time, you know, it's, 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 it's absolutely massive and helping a, a gym member or a customer or a client feel sort of comfortable and relaxed. You know, I mean, Hathen, uh, you'll probably back us up on this, but I mean, anytime you go in a new gym, it's a little bit like, it doesn't matter how long you've been in gyms. It doesn't matter sort of what training history you've got, what shape you're in, what condition you're in. It's always a little bit like, oh, this this isn't my normal gym. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm somewhere totally different here. Well, it's like going anywhere you know, new, and, isn't it? You, you don't know where anything is. Of course it is. <laughs> Yeah, you, well, well, yeah, there's that as well, yeah. yeah you don't know yeah. where anything is, you're not particularly comfortable, you can't just go in and get on with it, you have to sort of think about what you're doing and, and the people that are there and being like, yeah. you know, a normal human being without yeah. going in and just like using up all the stuff and leave, making it a mess and same with like a new workplace. Well, well, well that's it, you know? you know. Yeah, well, exactly, buddy, exactly. Any new environment's going to feel the same and, and like I say, when it comes to that fitness environment as well, Especially if you're in a place where um, I don't know, maybe your self confidence isn't isn't great. You know, that's a that's the reason that a lot of people actually start to join the gym. You know, to sort of it's self development, isn't it? It's improvement. You don't have to dislike yourself to want to make yourself a little bit better either. You know, but at the same time, you know, it, it can be a little bit like oh, they might be looking at us or they like they're watching us. And like you say yourself, buddy, who do you even ask questions if you don't know where something is? Who's that member of staff that you can go up to and ask? Whereas in the in the sort of facility that you that you're used to training, and you know who to go to, you know you know those members of staff, you know the regulars, and you can have a little bit a little bit crack, you know, and you can you can just go in and like you say, sort of, sort of do your own thing. But like I say, I can I can say hands down that when I first got me 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 PT qualification and went into a gym as a PT, like. That scared the life out of us. Like I've now got to walk up, like past all these other PTs that have been doing it for years. You know, years of experience. Go up onto the gym floor to members that have been training there for years and say, "Oh, hi, hi I'm the new guy. Listen, listen to me," sort of thing. Yeah. You know, I've got a couple of ideas that you might want to try. Um, so you know, I, I understand that feeling. It's not just as a member that you get those that you might come across those feelings, you know, but I'm I'm well aware that as a member, when you turn up to the gym, especially for the first time, if if your first sort of point of contact with that gym or, or with an instructor in the gym can help you feel a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more at ease, a little bit more comfortable, um, you're gonna have normally a much sort of easier transition into that environment and a much sort of um 
much sort of like a, a more focused approach to uh, to your fitness training as well, you know, because like like Hatham said a second ago, you don't really know what you're doing. You might just go in and do a little bit of everything, you know. If you if you sort of start to build a connection with somebody and you feel like you can go and ask them questions, pick their brain a little bit, you know, because I, I would I would always sit and just have a little bit of crap with people, you know, if someone was saying like. Oh, I've had this for breakfast. What do you think? I wasn't going to turn around and be like, "Oh, well, you're not one of my clients. I'm not going to help you with your diet." Do you know what I mean? So the 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 help is there, and like that is something that we'll look at next week as well when we're talking about inductions and and stuff like that as well. Like if you go for an induction and you sort of feel like the person just sort of takes you in, shows you right, there's that, there's that, there's that. See you later, sort of thing. Are you then going to feel comfortable? Is 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 it going to be the sort of environment that you feel comfortable going up and asking these questions you know and trying to find these these bits of information out um which is why it's always worth getting inductions in in a couple of different gyms you know go try them out have a little bit of a walk around because a member of staff's got to show you around you know what's the sort of vibe that you get from them exactly buddy yeah a lot of gyms will do um either a, like a free day pass as a trial or even sort of like i know dw used to do one for like a five i'm sure like david lloyd's does um a lot of like leisure centers and stuff like that'll do like a day pass as well so you can go try a couple of different gyms out it might not be what you're looking for which sort of links in with what we're going to talk this morning as well because we're looking at components of fitness so if you're thinking to yourself right i want to get really sort of cardiovascularly fit i want to do a lot of running because i play a lot of football and stuff like that you don't necessarily want to go along to a gym that has just got a load of like proper old school cast iron weights and like barbells and dumbbells and stuff like that with like barely a treadmill or a skipping rope or anything like that in sight you know so again thinking about what equipment has the gym got and and, and is it sort of relevant to your fitness goals you know it's the same as if I wanted to get a little bit more flexible and I just went and did a load of strength training. I'm, I'm going to get stronger, but I'm not going to move in the direction that I wanted to, you know. So again, just it's a really good way to sort of um, put yourself in the fitness environment that's going to be sort of most beneficial to yourself, you know. And, and again, thinking about it from the instructor's point of view um, in, in this situation, you're, you're helping somebody feel at ease with potentially a pretty jarring and drastic lifestyle change you know really um especially if they're left to their own devices and they think oh i'm gonna i'm gonna start eating like um i'm gonna pretty much change up my lifestyle totally you know i'm gonna start coming to the gym seven days a week and i'm gonna eat five meals a day when they weren't doing any of that to begin with you know and um, it is just sort of getting them in helping to be sustainable and just making those little tweaks you know and making sure that um like like i say just keeping them comfortable and i guess keeping them coming back as well you know because what we want is consistency you know you want your members to be coming into the gym whether they're pt you know or, or, or not you know you want them turning up because that's where they're going to get their results from you know um and as an instructor of course i always wanted people to get the most out of their memberships um and and, and the time and effort as well you know because time time is well time and energy are limited resources aren't we you know we only we only have so much to spend each day so like I say, just getting the most out of your training. And it all comes down to this first meeting or this first meeting with a client um, can make such a big difference anyway and get you off on, on the right foot and give you almost like a little bit of a boost, you know, and get them moving in the right direction. Um, okay, guys, so a little bit of a, a brief recap from, from the last week. Like I sort of mentioned earlier on, we looked at um, we looked at skeletal muscles, um, how they differ from cardiac and smooth muscles and sort of where we might find those in the body. We looked at how to conduct yourself professionally and what that sort of might entail. You know, we're talking um, confidentiality with, of course, data. You're thinking about minding people's personal space. You're thinking about turning up on time. You're thinking about your appearance when you get there, time management and stuff like that as well, you know. Um, thinking about sort of your... Um, commitments and stuff like that you know what does what is expected from you sort of in that role you know when we're thinking about acting professionally and then just sort of how to introduce yourself you know and again that might be something to have a little reflect on now because it's not as simple these days as walk up and shake somebody's hand is it you know that's, that's a big 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 no no slap on slap on the wrist now for walk up, walk up and shake somebody's hand as well so again you know we're going to be reassessing that as well and that might be something to think about post covid as well you're gonna we're all gonna have to respect people's space and and you know if people aren't ready for that sort of close physical contact or or, or, or being within a certain proximity you know certainly as the as the sort of gym instructor in this case you've 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 got to respect that you know and sort of give give them a little bit of space 
Um, it's something that I've considered a little bit throughout lockdown because obviously I haven't been PT and I've sort of moved away from that now. And like just the idea of trying to train somebody without getting that close to them and in that physical space, it's it it. I don't know how how um, they'd work around that. You know, I don't know. I don't know what they've been doing. I mean, I don't think you've been you've been training with your PT, have you? Since since I, you've gone I back. haven't had a like a proper one on one or like like even a group session where like there's two or three of us in, yeah. uh, in probably like yeah. almost two years now. Feels like um, yeah. I, I, do you I, see? I really do you see what you're getting done? I've seen yeah. I've seen people in the gym with with PTs, mm-hmm. but they're not like it's not like it was. Do you know what I mean? Like they're not. I mean, previously if they'd be like right up in your grill and like showing you exactly what to do but it's yeah. like right i'm going to show mm-hmm. you and then i'm going to take four steps this way and you're going to do it yeah. sort of thing yeah like yeah say it was a squat so you've not got or a clean straight, or, straight or, or, yeah. yeah like they, they would they would show you and then they'd stand right next to you and be like right now your mm-hmm. hand needs to be here and you need to have your back sort of like that and they'd be yeah. and they'd be like a bit more hands-on but now it's a little bit like right i'm <laughs> This is how you do it, and I'm, I'll be over there. <laughs> yeah, do you, you, you do it? Yeah, yeah, do do what I do, and yeah. then yeah, yeah, good Which, luck. Sort it, of thing. It, it's still something, but it's not quite oh, like you know. If you were doing like squats, you might have in the past been spotted with them, but I think they're, they're trying not exactly, to do yeah. stuff like that now as much as they can. Or if they're spotting you on, let's say a bench yeah. press, they both everyone has to have a mask on. Which, again, I mean, I don't mind wearing a mask, but particularly during an exercise, it makes it a little bit. It's probably not any more any different, to be honest. It doesn't really rest- I can't say it restricting your airflow, but it's not comfortable. It's probably a bit of a distraction. Yes, of course, yeah. You need yeah. To get, if you're going to do stuff yeah. like that, you're going to have to get used to doing it. You're not just going to be able to put a mask on and do your normal workout because your body's going to be like, well, this yeah. is different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this is strange. Yeah, some, something's off. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You know, so again, um, th- th- there'll be ways around it, and I'm sure <laughs> that, that industry... Uh, as well as lots of other industries are going to be changing and, and sort of revising things and adapting going forward as well, you know, because of course this isn't the only industry where people need to work pretty much in physical contact with, with their clients and stuff like that as well, you know. So again, going forward, um, it's probably going to be sort of constantly under revision. Um, but like I say, just in terms of in terms of welcoming somebody on that first day, you know, even little things just like a smile, think about your body language, you know, rather than sort of like, sitting there with with your arms folded you know just sort of staring at somebody across the table while they try and talk to themselves about you I mean you, you know what I'm like guys I've always got the cup on the go normally but it's just it's like it's just something to do it's like I'm going to sit there and have a cup or I'm nice and relaxed do you want a drink you know I would always I'd always offer them a drink when they first come in can I get you a hot drink do you want do you want a bottle, a bottle of water or a drink of water or something like that and then straight away like like we sort of mentioned last week if you've got a couple of bits of information like name you know what their fitness goals are, maybe because they're filled in the form when they've joined up to the gym. You know, you can sort of treat them with a lot of individuality when they come in, which just helps them feel welcome. And, you know, it really, really helps in that introduction as well. You know, if they come in and they don't really know who they're looking for and somebody from, from the facility sort of swoops in from the side and said, oh, you you must be so-and-so, like you're here for your meeting. We're, we're made at 11 o'clock, you know, it, it just looks really good. It looks really professional and, and like I say, it just gets the ball moving and it gets them in the gym and doing doing their thing a little bit sooner as well. And it gets them to start buying into you as well because, you know, as a PT, as a fitness instructor, you've got to have that trust. You know, it, it, it's the trust of, right, the PT isn't going to give me something that's going to make me look stupid for no reason, you know. Um, not saying that you, there won't be exercises where you look a little bit daft, but there'll be good reason for them, you know, as long as they're always justified, Yeah, you know. <laughs> So yeah, I think the is the best ones, making they? sure that you know there's nothing in the back. Oh yeah, usually, usually yeah, um, you know, and then they're thinking to themselves, of course, if you're saying to them, right, I want you to put this big old heavy barbell on your back and do like a squat or something. They've never done it before. They've got to have that trust in you as well that you know that they can do it, and you're not going to let them get hurt either yeah. as well. You know, so you've got to start developing that trust. Well, and again, there might, might be times where you disagree, where you say, like, look, we need to do a little bit more of this. I know that you want to work towards sort of say, I know you want to work towards your endurance, but these ligaments, for example, aren't strong enough, so we need to do some strength work right now. If they're thinking, look, I'm paying you £30 an hour and you work, and in their mind they're thinking, right, you're going in a different direction from where I want to go. Yeah. You know, you've got to have that trust from your client that you know the, the like the best way to get them to their goals and they've got to buy into that really. I think- the be- the best way to do that is is they're going to see results. So I think starting off basic, mm-hmm. 
and, and getting them to feel a little bit better before they maybe even look a bit better. Um, yeah, usually, the same with usually anything, like the feel it, the feeling. You want you want to find something small and attainable at first, and if you can prove that you can get them to do that or you can do that, then they're going to trust you because it's it's about results really. Like it's not it's nothing personal, is it? If someone's not enjoying the training or not seeing results, they're going to go elsewhere. So exactly. It's not a personal slight on you. It's just they want to get the the most out of the thirty quid an hour or whatever it is. So if you can get yeah, them to do yeah. something and you know, basic. Yeah. I think it goes for anything. If you're doing any job and you can deliver on the basics first, you know, it doesn't matter what you're providing. If you're providing a circuit or if you're doing like a bit of artwork or if you're building them something or whatever it is, if you can do something small and achievable first, they're going to trust in your work and say, okay, yeah, this this person's obviously the real deal. I can trust them. I can talk to them. Yeah. And, and you go from there. Yeah, hundred percent, buddy. You know, some of it does take a little bit of time and a little bit, like any relationship, needs a little bit of nurturing. You know, and like, like I say, it's always evolving. Um, but definitely the way that we address a client and treat a client from from the word go, really, you know, does start to feed into that sort of feeling as well. You know, so definitely go back and check out last week's session if that's something that you just want to sort of touch up on and revise on as well. And um, this week we're going to be sort of focusing more on. Like I mentioned earlier on the different components of fitness and the fitness testing as well, you know, to make sure that we're using the right sort of testing to assess the right sort of goals, you know, sort of, again, like if I was to do, um, if like, like a, a one rep max, say for, um, say for example, a one rep max, if you've never come across it before, it's essentially just putting as much weight on the bar, um, or, or, or doing one repetition of an exercise as, as yeah. heavy as you possibly can really, you know, which is a really, really good indicator and a really good way to test physical strength and muscular strength. You know, <sighs> if I want to assess my muscular strength, going out there and doing a bleep test isn't going to do that. You know, I'll get an idea how aerobic, uh, aerobically fit I am and how cardiovascularly fit I am, but it's it's not going to give me the information that I'm actually looking for. You know, so as, as, as much as we've got a lot of different fitness testing kit out there that is available, you know, you're talking, yeah, of, of course, um, sort of skin fold calipers, uh, blood pressure monitors, all of that sort of thing, um, like well, a tape okay. if you're doing succumb circumference measurements, any of it, buddy, you know, yeah, like 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 you say, um, sort of like a, like a Fitbit or like a fitness band or something like that, you know, there's so much out there and it's just using it in the right way to track that you're, you're actually making progress and moving in the right direction, you know, because like I say, you might be finding, okay, you're new to a gym, you've never done anything before, you're just going to start doing whatever that person over there is doing because you've had a big yeah. crack and they've said you can join in with them and it makes you feel a bit more comfortable training with somebody else you know without think, realizing uh, that sorry man. Go on, go on, buddy. i was just i was no, just no, no, sure. and then i started coughing two seconds i'm gonna mute my mic two seconds no worries buddy no worries oh, nice. right. sorry about that <clears throat> <laughs> yeah got a bit of a, a frog <laughs> are you all right there. buddy are yeah. you all right um I was just going to say, like, sometimes as well, I think the, the other problem with all that is, like, you, you get obsessed with your, the levels you're at in terms of, oh, well, I had, you know, um, 2%, well, you won't have had 2% body fat, nobody does. I had 10% body fat at one point, um, and now I'm absolutely obsessed with getting back down to that level, but realistically, you're in better cardiovascular shape than you were, and you've gone up 2% body fat, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. just it's just a measurement, and it, I, I, tr I try not to get. Up, I, I see a lot of people get obsessed with it. Um, same with like um, particular elements of like, oh well, I used to bench a hundred, and now I can only bench ninety, and it's like, well, is that the end of the world, really? When, yeah. Unless unless what you're doing is is like you know pure strength, and you want to be you're going to go and do like a some kind of lifting competition or CrossFit or whatever, then yeah, fair enough. But mm -hmm. if you're just doing it to a look good, which a lot of people are, d does sacrificing ten kilos on the bar really matter? No, not really. Exactly. Um, if, exactly. If you're doing buddy. it to be to be stronger, yeah, okay, it's a bit of a disaster. But you can. It's not like you're stuck. <laughs> it's not like that yeah. forever either. Do you know what I mean? You've got you've got the rest of your life to get yourself back up to to whatever you need to get up to. And I think that that's the main thing for me and a lot of people, like mm -hmm. to get stressed about. Well, I was here. And I know I was because yeah. I measured it, and now I can't yeah. get back here. That's the thing; it's data, isn't it? It's kind of black and whiteness in front of you, and there's no arguing with the fact that you 
used to run a mile in a certain time or something like that, you know. And it's one of them that, like you say, buddy, it's not it's not necessarily the be all and end all. Yeah. Being able to being able to have that sort of good holistic, well rounded sort of fitness and, and approach to fitness, you know, is 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 better for ninety nine percent of the the public, I would say, you know, because like there's not many of us that are going to do a physique competition or a, a bodybuilding competition, you know, or a strongman competition or anything like that. You know, like you say, the majority of us just want to move a little bit better, feel a little bit better and look a little bit better, you know. Plus, and, and- I think the one thing you've got to remember as well is what you're doing sustainable. Like, yeah, OK, great. You could do, I don't know, you could do a mile in, in seven minutes, but you doing that every other day or whatever it is like some people get really into the running i would never do that by the way um but is, is that are you going to be able to do that for the next five to ten years probably not <laughs> yeah exactly so exactly. Are, you, are you better off dropping back and doing eight minute miles and doing mm-hmm. two of them every time you go for a run and doing them sustainably and keeping yourself at say 90 percent of where you are at, mm-hmm. rather than operating at 100 and burning yourself out totally yeah yeah or trying to go to like that 100 and almost 105, isn't it? Yeah, when you push yeah. for a PB every single time, you know, it's not always about beating your time from last week, your score from last week, or yeah. whatever it is. You know, it's it's it is like you say, buddy, it's it's better to have like that good that 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 mix in there as well, you know. But if you look um, at all the all the like most successful athletes, I'm mm-hmm. thinking like even even like the tennis was on last week and and like Novak Djokovic. He isn't going 105% in every single training session. He doesn't even play 105% in the matches. He, he yeah. saves it. He, he's very he's very good at finding the level he needs to be at. Yeah, picking his spots. Yeah, and that's, and that's yeah, like, what you've got to do. Otherwise, like, he, he, look at Andy Murray. He's completely and utterly ruined. Like, his mm-hmm. body's just totally broken down, and it, it happens because, and that's at the highest level. So imagine you doing it, trying to jump in. And, and go a million miles an hour all at once and you, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna you're yeah. gonna struggle uh, to say that it's probably it's a sport that he'll have been training through with and for since he was a kid yeah you know he's had the top trainers he's had the top nutritionists and yes yeah, sooner or later it, it, it takes its toll you know it's quite often that the people that are at the top of the game at the very very best for a long time end up sort of especially when it comes to sports and athletes and stuff like that. Yeah. Sooner or later, you know, um, the body starts to break down, of course, naturally as it does with everybody. But that wear and tear, like, really, really adds up. You know, we always talk about Roddy Coleman and the fact that he's, he's like, he's got essentially, like, one vertebrae now that's just his whole, his, his whole back. Got one backbone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. all, it used to be in separate bits and now it's just, like, fused together. It's just one, yeah. And <laughs> you know what? Yeah, he probably doesn't have a single regret at all. Uh, you know, he's 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 made a living out of it. He's 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 sort of internationally known um, and respected. But at the same time, for every every Ronnie Coleman, you know, there'll be there'll be hundreds, if not thousands, of people that try and do the same and and still have the same physical sort of breakdown, but um, don't reach any anywhere near the heights that um like the the, the very tippy top, you know, the cream of the crop actually go on to do, you know. So so again, we're thinking about. Why are we training? Usually it is so the stuff that we the bits that we've got last a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, work work a little bit better. Um, you know, we don't I don't know anyone who's training that's in the mindset of, you know, training so hard that they're in a wheelchair by fifty, because that yeah. don't make any sense. You know, the aim is to still be walking around and, and active at 60, 70, 80, you know, how how however long we, we're lucky enough to get. You know, so you know, being able to just sort of Know what it is that you're training, sort of what areas of your of your sort of fitness it is that you're shaping, and just test it because, like you say, but your priorities are going to change as well. You might know how to check your um, cardiovascular like endurance, know that you're getting better, you're running a little bit faster. Like you say, you might get to the point where you're like, okay, I'm running, I've hit my target. Now I don't necessarily want to get any faster. I want to, I want to move on to something else. I want to build up a little bit of muscle. I want to build up a little bit of strength. The ways that you've been testing your endurance and your cardio, you're not then going to be able to do through your strength training, you know. So you're going to have to have a bit of an idea. Okay, how do I then measure 
these new sort of areas, these new components that I'm going to try and develop. Um, and that's where, like I say, we'll get a little bit of a dive in later on, look at some different fitness testing kit and look at where we might use each one um, in, in picking out different sort of areas of fitness that we might want to test. And like I say, making sure that we're moving in the right direction. Because, you know, someone, even as the instructor, like you, someone might be making progress and they might be getting stronger. But you, again, you might just be giving them the wrong tests every week. And all of a sudden they're thinking to themselves like, I'm not making any progress at all, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, I feel a little bit fitter, but I'm not lifting any more weight. Yeah, you know? well, that's, and, that's the other thing as well. Like you've got to, <clears throat> it's not, not quite a responsibility, but like it, it's, if you want them to see the result, you've got to show them because they're probably not going to know. But well, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you've got to point them in the right direction. Like, like, like Hatham said earlier on, you'll probably feel better first before you start to look noticeably noticeably better especially like to yourself and the people that see you sort of all day every day you know within a couple of weeks of, of better, better food good hydration and a bit of exercise can make make an absolute world of difference for the for the way that you're feeling you know and, and, and your energies and your motivation and stuff like that um so 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 yeah being able to sort of um that's not the be all and end all really as well but it's one of the like things that'll happen isn't it like you will start to look and, and by look better just just more healthy like it, it's not even necessarily like a physique thing which it will yeah. come you, yeah, you, you kind of you, you know your physique will come but even mm -hmm. like your skin and your hair skin, and, and hair, your, exactly your eyes, you know you'll not have as many like um I, I get it really bad when i don't sleep as well um and that's one of the things my exercise i go to sleep like and yeah. I, don't, I don't end up looking as tired like my skin's better yeah my, my posture's better like just, I just look all around a little bit healthier when I exercise, and when I don't, I start to get like this weird. Like, like this week, I'm sort of like getting a little bit <laughs> punched over, and like you know, I'm getting dark circles under my eyes, which just you get run down, and it, and it happens. So, looking better isn't like the, the the be all and end all, and neither is your physique, but it'll all come, which, which is yeah. I tend yeah. not to focus on it because I know that if I do things right, it'll it'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, buddy. And and you know that the, the whole thing to do with sort of like aesthetics and stuff like that. The only person you should really be trying to sort of change your aesthetic for is is yourself as well. You know, like if if, if changing, getting broad broader shoulders or dropping a little bit of weight from here, if that helps you feel more confident in yourself, amazing. If that helps you keep your sort of chin held high when you walk into a room, that's yeah. where we. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about training aesthetically and stuff like that. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not overly bothered about, you know, wide lats, tiny waist, you know, for all they say, like aesthetic, that sort yeah, of thing. Like 80 like, biceps, like. Exactly, buddy. Yeah. Exactly. You know, like even the aesthetic <clears throat> side of training, it should always be for your own sake. You know, it should always be for your own sake and your own benefit and, 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 and certainly not for, not for other people. Um, I as well just, just uh, get that one in there this morning before we move on, that's for sure. Yeah, um, it's, so, I, I think it's one of the big mistakes a lot of people make. Oh, well, I just want abs. <laughs> it's like, well, you can yeah. get abs and probably still be in terrible, terrible condition on the inside. <laughs> like, yeah, your oh, heart definitely. can be packed full of, your arteries can be packed full of fat and it doesn't necessarily make you healthy, does it? Yeah, exactly, buddy, exactly. You know, and, and, and like, like you say, when you're the instructor, like, at first, You've got to drop a load of information on a new client and, and like you say, get them to buy into it, you know, and just get them to like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. I've got to start doing what he's doing. Because I've, I've, had, I've had clients over the years that want to run before they can walk almost. It's like, right, Rob, give us a new diet. I'm like, no, that's not how this works. Like, write down your current diet, send it to me, and I'll make a couple of little tweaks, you know. Like, oh, um, can, can, can I train seven days a week? no no you've never trained before <laughs> like you're going to be hurt and you're going to need to rest you know and again like i've had clients that i've told not to train seven days a week and like i've gone in the gym on a day off to train and they're in training as well i'm like I'm, it's for your own good <laughs> do you know yeah. what i mean but that's, like, that's that's what i mean like you've you've got to um sometimes you've almost like got to put the brakes on someone a little bit, you know, especially someone who's chomping at the bit and dying and, and they're like, right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make these changes and I'm going to make them fast. You know, you, again, you've got to sort of slowly bleed the idea to them, you know, that fast isn't always the best way, you know, it's certainly not sustainable and it's, it's, it's definitely not the healthiest way to, to, to make a change. Um, that's, that's for sure. So, so yeah, definitely lots to think about this morning. And then uh, the last thing that we're going to sort of circle around and touch on is this I, I, ways to stay professional and make sure that you're acting professionally. Um, 
and helping somebody be comfortable when you're actually carrying out a fitness test on them. You know, because um, same again, what we mentioned earlier on, buddy, you know, I, I don't know what is going on with all of this sort of thing right now in relation to COVID and stuff like that. But I imagine that, of course, anyone who's in a healthcare setting, you know, um, is is still needing to work up really close to people, you know. Um, of course, when, when you go and get your vaccine, someone actually comes up to you and, 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 and does it for you, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that in medical settings, somebody still will be able to check your blood pressure and to come over and, and do all of that sort of thing as well. well I think, you know? um, obviously, like... Um... One to one care is still happening in hospitals. Mm-hmm. So they're testing people, but obviously Will some be, people yeah. sleep in there and stuff. But then they'll have a COVID, they'll have a COVID ward as well. Um, so yeah, there's definitely one to one care still going on. Um, but that that's including like um, retirement homes and stuff as well. So I, of course, yeah, and, and any kind of I think social care as well. A lot of that is still face to face. Whether it's like close proximity, that I don't know, but there's definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still medical care. I mean, it has to be done. <laughs> like, there's no two ways about it. Has it has to be, of course. It does, but exactly, mate. It, it it has to be done, you know. And 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 again, when when we're talking about this side of things, and we're in a gym and stuff like that, like, yeah. um, maybe it's not so urgent that it's done. You know, maybe it's, it 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 might it might be seen as a little bit more optional. It might be something that is sort of at the discretion of the the trainer and the and the client as well you know you might have a trainer that's happy to do it and a client that doesn't want somebody that close fair dues you might get other clients that would rather know what their sort of blood pressure is and and, and that sort of thing you know at, at the minute so again like it's it's a strange one when you're when you're working with somebody up close as the professional like especially for the first time when it's when it's when it's somebody new because of course to them it's 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 going to be brand new as well but like if you've got someone who comes into the gym who is a little bit self-conscious, wants to lose, lose a little bit of weight, you know, feeling as though they've put on a little bit like around their midriff and stuff like that, T-shirts not fitting them so well anymore. Like the last thing you want to do is like, right, stand there. I'm going to go and get these skinful calipers and literally start like grabbing your side and be like, oh, um, this is your level of body fat. You know, it's just going to make somebody feel so uncomfortable at first. You know, um, and and that's 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 just one of the examples I can think of. You know, again, you might have someone who isn't really in 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 a position, you know, to be able to be doing jumping and stuff like that. You take them onto the gym floor and start getting them to do box jumps. Be like, oh, we're going to test your play, uh, like your yeah, your explosive power. You're like, they're going to be thinking like, like why, you know? Uh, yeah. And they're going to be, and they 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 really will be be sort of so conscious because especially once you've done it for a while it's quite easy to sort of detach yourself and switch off from that feeling of like, it must be new to them. This must be, you know what I mean? When you've done hundreds and hundreds of fitness tests, you've got to stay in that mindset of this might be the first one for this person. And, you know, um, I've got to make sure that they're comfortable sort of throughout it. So it's like letting them know what you're going to be doing sort of ahead of time and stuff like that. So that's something we can get into uh, towards the back end of the session. Um, so let's dive into it let's get in there so like i say the first thing that we need to look at before we we, we're looking at fitness testing really is components of fitness now i know a lot of you will have covered this on the level one and when when we look at them in a little bit more depth but just as like a little bit of a recap so we can start to think about how we're actually um, using that fitness testing kit as well so uh, the six components of physical fitness that we've got, um, and of course, we, we've mentioned them quite a lot this morning. We've got aerobic endurance, you know, so sort of how long can your heart and lungs um, function to get oxygen around the body to, to the muscles that it needs to be and stuff like that, especially when you start asking your body to do a little bit more like running. Um, muscular endurance, of course, how long can a muscle work before it starts to shut down and start to, um, if you've ever had it before, you know, if you're doing leg day and you, you'll do like, you know, and your legs just turn to concrete all of a sudden, yeah, like you know, or you'll do like leg. one. Yeah. 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 And like your muscle just goes, no, it's so funny. Like when you're doing something like a bicep curl, like one rep, you'll be fine. And the next rep, the muscle just goes, nah, nah well, I'm, the, I'm, I'm giving you absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's some pretty dangerous ones with that as well. I suppose if you're doing like a bench press and your chest gives out, like, you're in a world of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Same with yeah. squats. If, if you, you train get the bottom of a squat yeah. and you go to push and your legs are like, got yeah. any push left in there, like, and it's like, well, if you haven't got the bar set up properly, you're not getting out of that move, are you? <laughs> I, I, that's where your your spot is going to come in handy. Yeah. Or that's that that's one of the many benefits of the Smith machine. 
you know, if you've, uh, if you've got a Smith machine, it's not an exact, it's not like a like for like when it comes to sort of swapping exercises across, but in just in terms of sort of like the, the security that you've got there from just being able to latch the bar on no matter kind of what position you're in. If you're at the bottom of a squat and you can't push up, latch the bar on, move yourself out from underneath, absolutely no bother, you know, but yeah, muscular endurance is a funny one because like, yeah, one one second you can be fine and then the muscle just goes, nah, I'm tired, I'm, 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 I'm giving in on this, yeah, to, Mic drop, yeah, just like, nah, no thanks. Um, and again, that comes from like, if you're doing, say, sort of 50 squats, you know, as opposed to putting a load of weight on the bar and doing like five really, really heavy. Um, that would be more muscular strength, uh, which we've got on the list as well. You know, how much weight can you move in one go, you know? Um, and really, if you're testing it, you might do one rep, probably two reps, three at a push, you know, when it comes to developing and testing strength. Um, flexibility is probably something that you've come across before when you're thinking about sort of um, the range of motion at, at, at the joints that you've got, you know, how well is your knee move, your hip, your back, all of that sort of thing. Do your muscles feel tight? Can you get down to put your own socks on, tie your shoelaces, stuff like that, you know, um, how, how, how flexible are you? And of course, different ways that we can test that and train that to develop it as well. Um, speed is, um, of course, more to do with how fast can you cover a particular distance? you know, um, which is sort of where you might be thinking about. So speed is going to benefit somebody like Usain Bolt, who's really, really quick um, across a short distance. Aerobic endurance at the top of the list that we mentioned a second ago is more like you might think like Mo Farah where he's doing like a long distance run or sort of like a, a 3,000 meters or even sort of like a, like a 5K or something like that. You know, that's where your aerobic endurance comes in as opposed to speed. Muscular strength we mentioned a second ago and your body composition is essentially, you know, Almost that idea that Hatham was on about earlier on, you know, like that that aesthetic point of view, you know, and the aesthetic side of your training. Um, but again, you know, it's not just about how it visually looks. What you're really testing with your body composition is how much of your mass is muscle, how much of it is fat, how much of it is stored water, you know, um, and being able to figure out sort of what your body is made out of, you know, so you might actually be able to start make little tweaks. Okay, I want to... Um, I want a little bit more lean mass. I want a little bit less body fat, for example, you know, and, and manipulate things that way from there. Um, so body composition, like you say, buddy, one particular body composition is really, really hard to maintain. It's going to fluctuate. You know, it's always going to fluctuate. Um, even if you look at these guys that are on the front of like men's health and physique magazines and stuff like that, they don't look like that year round. Like they look like that on that day because well, they knew someone was coming along to do a photo shoot. Even, even then they probably don't look exactly like that. <clears throat> No, got on a lot the, of lightning, a lot on of the day. influence in that as well. Exactly, buddy. They don't even look like that on the day, never mind year around as well. So, so yeah, we've got to be aware. Maybe good Nick, like don't get us wrong. Oh, they will. They'll be will. they'll be in phenomenal shape, but they get a mm -hmm. bit of help as well. Of course they do. Of course they do, you know, buddy. And, and and that's the sort of thing where, like you sort of mentioned earlier on, you might be, you might say to somebody, oh, I'm 15% body fat, 12% body fat, whatever it might be. That's normally, that's normally what they're talking about, you know, when it, again, that sort of body composition. And again, there's different ways that we can go away and um, actually test that as well, you know. Um, and you know what? While I'm on, I'll just, just sort of put it out there. The body composition is the same as all of these other components in that, there's no right place to be at. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no body type or physique to look at and say, I should look like that. You know, there's no right level of flexibility. It depends what you need to be flexible for. It depends what you need to do, you know, and your body composition is exactly the same. So let's not endorse looking at other people's physiques and thinking I need to look like that because your ideal body composition for yourself, for your build, for your body type, for what you need your body to do, your your ideal body composition is going to be totally different to somebody else. Do you know what? Like you might look at somebody like Eddie Hall. His body composition is spot on for what he needs it to do. Do you know what I mean? He, he needs to lift heavy things. Um, if he had the body composition of one of these physique models, he wouldn't be a very good power lifter. You know, he wouldn't no. be able to do what he needs to do. Oh, so man. that would be, very that would be man, e e exactly, yeah, you know, that would be that would be wrong for him, you know. So again, thinking about what is right for you rather than looking at what somebody else has got and thinking, I want that, you know, I guess I guess is the message that I'm trying to go with there. Um, 
because I feel as though, we, of course, society is constant comparisons and it's so easy, especially as social media becomes more prominent, it's so easy to just constantly make comparisons, you know, and and and, and again, you know, we've got to think about what you've got and what you need rather than what other people are doing with their own fitness journeys. I think especially in terms of if you if you need to lose weight for health reasons, mm-hmm. um, you know, your, your, your body composition is important, but in terms of like you were saying before, like having a really wide back and like a skinny waist, that doesn't really matter. If you need to lose weight to say, <clears throat> like get rid of your visceral fat or whatever, which is like the fat around your organs and stuff, then it's not really going to matter too much whether you've got like big broad shoulders or anything like that. We're not really, your doctor's not really bothered. Just telling exactly. you like, look, you, you're, you're putting your body under a lot of strain here. And that's yeah. what we need to yeah. undo. We don't need you to go and do like a hundred pull-ups or whatever. Like, not yeah if you can do them yeah. great that's fine yeah. but like yeah. it's not necessary you don't have to be all oiled up on stage with like you know like a pair of speedos on or whatever in a competition that's not what we're after yeah exactly what it's like yeah healthier. that's all well and good but yeah we need your heart to still be able to work we need your lungs to still be able to work you know so yeah that's that's a really good point buddy you know what is especially like what is right for one isn't isn't right for everybody else that's for sure um, okay, guys. So we've had a little bit of a, a little bit of a look through these um, a second ago, but I'll just quickly sort of flash through the cards that if you want to um, be able to sort of revise these as as you come back and revisit the session or anything like that, you know. So uh, aerobic endurance is the ability of the cardio respiratory system, lungs and heart, pretty much, to e- efficiently supply nutrients and oxygen to work in muscles during sustained physical activity. So when we're thinking about monitoring aerobic endurance, that might be stuff like, um, you know, bleep tests, you know, potentially um, when it comes to aerobic endurance, or even just going out and doing a run, do the same run and try and get a little bit quicker. You know, that sort of thing, that's a good way to just sort of monitor how efficient your body is at getting oxygen around to the um, muscles that needs it. You know, so, so again, making sure that we're actually testing the right thing. If you're thinking, I want to get fitter, in terms of aerobic endurance, make sure that you are actually um, testing that as well and make sure that you're moving in the right direction. Um, so proper definition of muscular endurance is the ability of a muscle to continue contracting over a period of time against a light to moderate load. Simply because if it's a heavy load, you're not going to get enough reps out to start developing your muscular endurance. That's going to turn into more sort of strength training. Um, so it's the ability of the muscular system to work efficiently. So again, how can we monitor muscular endurance? Um, again, depending on what muscles it is that we're thinking about, you know, we might be able to say, okay, then how, not in terms of speed, but like if I stand and do 50 bicep curls, how many times do I need to have a rest? How many times does the lactic acid get so much that I need to have a breather? Can I get to the point where I can do 50 in one go? You know, again, it doesn't have to be really heavy. It doesn't have to be that they're screaming at you and ready to sort of pop out of air, like sort of detach from you, <laughs> from your upper arm, you know, like at that point, it's, it, it, it is, it's just, it's just a case of like, okay, can I get through these 25, 50 reps, whatever it is, without stopping as many times as I needed to the first time. Um, Again, like I like to use cycling quite a lot to think about sort of lower body muscular endurance, and um, because although cycling will work on your cardiovascular um, endurance as well, of course, like if you've tried pedaling over and over again, especially against resistance, you know, like if you've done like a bike ride and you try and go up a hill or something like that, like you 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 need your legs to be able to cope, you need your quadriceps to be able to still work, um, and still be able to sort of contract and and fire, you know, and and normally like. I've done spin classes, for example. If you've if you've done a spin class, I've done spin classes Quads. where me quads <laughs> and me uh, and me 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 thigh muscles have given in long before me heart and me cardio. You know, like I, I can, I'm still breathing, I'm still feeling pretty good. Like I'm not necessarily like overly out of breath, but me thigh muscle has just gone. Nah, no, thank you. I'm, I'm giving you. I'm not giving you any more. You know, which is which is again thinking about that muscular endurance side of things. Is it the fact that you're too out of breath to keep going or is it the fact that your muscles are tiring out, you know? And again, we're thinking about those two different types of endurance and picking the right one that you might need to um, start working on. It's a bit of a a catch-22, I think, sometimes. I don't know about you, but like sometimes you work on one, all right, I'm going to improve my muscular endurance and then you you do it and then you get out there to do something cardio-wise and your legs will go all day, but you're like absolutely gassed. Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. I've done loads of cardio. I feel great. I'm not tired, but I can't move my legs anymore. 
Like, yeah, I, just, I kind yeah, of definitely. Move, like the, they've locked up, and I can feel the blood like pumping into them, and I'm just like, well, the the finished. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go sit in the car, like yeah. drive home. Oh mate, yeah, like, the, there's been times where I've sat after a game of football, just me, like just just like that in the car for about ten minutes, thinking <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely gassed, like I cannot breathe yeah. here. And on empty uh, or vice versa where I've been like sort of limping to the car like oh my god my legs are gonna they're gonna they're gonna yeah. Um, yeah yeah like you're, bre- you're breathing okay but, you, but, you, but your legs are just absolutely gone <laughs> All right. yeah yeah, yeah I, I kind of yeah. seem to strike a balance between the two I'm either really good at one or one or the other and it sort of changes every couple of weeks yeah that's it so it sort of, it sort of gives you the indication like from my point of view that says that it's kind of you're doing the right sort of stuff because at least one's getting chance to develop and take over yeah. the other and rather than just working on one and leaving the other one in the dirt, yeah. which is so easy to do and it's so tempting to do because I think, especially if we don't go into the gym or, or into training with an idea of what it is that we want to work, you know, it is so easy to just think, okay, I've got to find my strengths and develop my strengths even further. Like, I'm really good at this, I'll just do more of this. When really it's the stuff that you maybe is not so good at that you should be working on. You know, rather than ending up with like a really, really big gap between like I'm really strong, but like I can't really move far at all without getting out of breath. But for some reason, this person still just keeps working on their strength, mm. you know. Um, and that's where, again, we come around to that good sort of rounded, uh, well-rounded holistic training that sort of addresses what you perceive to be weaknesses as well as, you know, what you perceive to be your strengths. You know, we don't just uh, develop the stuff that we're good at. Uh, okay, guys, so rolling on to the next one, um, flexibility, like I sort of mentioned, it's uh, adequate range of motion in all joints of the body. It's the ability to move a joint through its complete range of movement. Um, so again, we're thinking about like like you mentioned before, but if you find yourself sitting with a little bit of a, a little bit of bad posture or something like that, you know, and, and then you go to all of a sudden, like I can't remember if it was you or Daniel mentioned an overhead press where like one shoulder was pulled forward a little bit too much. And it, it was you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I was like trying to, trying to, trying to get that range. Right arm. Right yeah. arm's got yeah. the, the, the most range in it. Yeah. So yeah. The that's other like... one just sort of locks when I get to a certain point. It doesn't like, doesn't like going that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're thinking to yourself like, right. Oh, I'm going to work my front delt. Yeah. And to do that, I need, I need to come back into this position and push. And all of a sudden your shoulders have just forgot what it's like to be in that position. And yeah. it's just like, nah, nah. Not happening. Screams sometimes. It, it clicks as well, which is a bit of a, um, a concern. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you know what, mate? It is, it's sort of always blow my mind how many people in, in the gym, because, I mean, you can you can look at somebody move, do you know what I mean? Like sit down, stand up, go up the stairs and get a rough idea of how sort of tight they are, how flexible they are. Of course, not not in terms of necessarily getting down to uh, like do like a, a like a crab like she is there or anything like that, you know, but like just whether someone might be carrying a little bit of tightness or if they've got like a little bit of an impingement if one shoulder's raised up more than the other, you know, and 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 like and like I say, so many people in the gym I've seen over the years that just like outside of the movements and the the exercises that they're doing, like there's just going to be no strength, no strength or no flexibility there. You know, it's that video that we mentioned before about the bodybuilder with a sock on his back and yeah. he just literally kind of get his hand around there to get this sock off his back, you know? And it's, it's like, do you know what? Like I can see the temptation to just lift in, go in the gym and lift up the heavy stuff next time. Cause that's what you're obviously very good at. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, we, we, we've got to be, we've got to be able to tie our shoelaces and, 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 and stuff like that, you know, and one of the best ways I found to monitor flexibility, I mean, depending on where somebody's at, it might literally just be like a, a can you get your own sock on sort of test? You know, are we at that point yet? But when it comes to flexibility, you know, we've got more um, official bit of kit, which, which is like a, a sit and reach test. So you'll sort of sit with your like legs out in front of you with your feet flat against like a, like box a, a box. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, normally. And then up on top of this box, like at the lip, it's got zero. And then it measures in centimeters how far beyond that you can actually get. And what you're aiming to do is with your feet against that box, just lean forward and it's like pretty much get as far onto that chart and as far down that sort of scale as you can. And okay, okay, I've got five centimetres past my toes this time. Uh, I've got 10 centimetres past this time. You know, my flexibility is getting better. Um, again, thinking about the actual joint it is, if, if you're thinking more specific sort of um, 
joints in particular. You know, you might feel as though your hamstrings are pretty good, you know, just because I've got tight hamstrings and you've got tight hamstrings, buddy. You know, not everybody's got tight hamstrings. For some people, it is shoulders, you know. So can you sort of do one that I've mentioned before where you'll sort of get your get your lower back and shoulders right against the wall, get your palms on uh, the back of your hands on the wall, and then try and keep them on the wall, but slide them up and together above your head. And you might start to actually feel your shoulders pull forward as you come away from the wall. It's a strange one. It's a little bit like you'll be sat there thinking, I could do that, no bother. But like, seriously, keep your shoulders back, elbows back, and um, sort of like your knuckles touching the wall and just slide them up the wall. And it'll give you an idea where you are with your your shoulder flexibility. Um, But like I say, with lower body, a lot of it does go through your lower back. So that sit and reach test is quite, quite uh, sort of accurate you know in terms of flexibility because like i yeah, say you'll if you feel have, it as well man like you will. if you do any kind of twist and motion like as soon as you twist yeah. it's like oh no <laughs> i get yeah. so far and my body's like nah no yeah but no all over here like it just yeah. it will not turn it's like nah yeah. there's no there's no range of motion here and you've never done it why well, try to do it now yeah yeah it's one of them you are <laughs> yeah I like I like to use the term you use it or lose it you know mm. if you don't uh if, if you don't use this range of motion so in reality, you're not going to have it no more. It's just like, you know? what are you, like, literally, like, it's it's like, the muscles are just like, wh- what is this? You've, yeah. In 27 years, you've never done this. Why, what, yeah. are, you, what yeah. are you doing? And why are you doing yeah. it now? <laughs> you've never asked us to do this, no. and now we get no warning. Uh, yeah. And you just like, yeah. <laughs> all the way around, and I'm like, ah, well, there we go. It's, exactly. There's all the air gone from inside my body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it's a, it's a strange one flexibility because you know what I think oh, after the last year I think it's going to be something that we've all got to work on you know especially if, we, if we've been a little bit more sedentary we haven't moved about quite as much maybe you used to work in a really physical job and you haven't been uh, you know moving around a lot so I think that flexibility and, and mobility is going to be something that we've got to think about quite a lot post uh, post lockdown um, I'm not confident enough to use the term post COVID yet but I will say post lockdown <laughs> Um, we'll right, see. guys. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So, so spinning on, we've got um, we've got speed, which is um, so it's actually a calculation speed. So, um, it's actually sort of distance um, divided by sort of time taken. You know, so you can get an idea relative to the distance. You know, sort of how how how, how fast that person's been. You know, how how yeah. quick they've moved. Um, so, over time, of right? course. Yeah, so um, the faster an athlete runs over a, a given distance is the greater their speed. So how do we test it? Um, same again, same as kind of similar to how we how we could with our endurance, um, aerobic endurance, but we don't need to go as far. You know, something like a hundred meter sprint is a really really good uh, indicator of someone's pure speed. You know, which is why um, somebody like Usain Bolt was just just perfect for the hundred meters. You know. Um, I, 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 he still holds the the world record as far as I know, um, spe- uh, specifically for the hundred meters as well. So, so yeah, you know, he was just 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 the, he was lit quite literally the world's fastest man. You know, same again if you put him in a in like a like a marathon against Mo Farah, he's 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 got no chance. You know, and again he just plays to his strengths. You look at their different body compositions. Mo Farah's body, he weighs, he's got less muscle. There's less power to him, but he's got less mass to carry across. 26 miles or whatever it is, you know, um, as opposed to Usain Bolt, who's got more mass, he's got more muscle, he's more powerful with each step and with each stride. But over time, that that carrying that extra weight is going to start to wear him down, and he just won't be able to sustain that speed, um, sort of indefinitely, you know. So that's kind of the biggest difference between um, aerobic endurance and and speed. You know, speed is how fast you can do it. Aerobic endurance is more how well your body can cope over a longer sort of distance. Yeah. Uh, okay, muscular strength. So the maximum force a muscle or muscle group can produce, like we mentioned earlier on, to do that you might you might do like a one rep max test or something like that where you're literally going to just put, like with this, uh, for example, with a chest press, bench press, all you're going to do, pretty much put as much weight as you can either side of the bar and still be able to push it up, you know, um, one rep max testing is quite difficult, really. I don't know if you've ever done it, buddy, but yeah, if you, if you get the weight wrong on the first <laughs> rep, you're sort of compromising every sort of 
uh, like sort of following test that you do because I'm like, right, okay, uh, we've we've put 100 kilograms on the bar, and you've you've managed that quite comfortably. Could you manage 110? Maybe. Can you manage 110 right after you've just done 100? You know, it's a little bit less likely. You know, so yeah, you might need to just sort of like, okay, we've got 100 kilograms out this time. Let's do 110 next time you're in, so so we know that you're fresh. You know, but um, yeah, so it's it's probably the most accurate way of just seeing where someone is in terms of pure muscular strength. And you know what, like it's 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 funny because you might when you might think of pure muscular strength, you know, you you might think of somebody who's built like a like a Mister Olympia. You know, someone who's dead defined, muscles all over the shop, popping out like you can literally hold them up against a textbook of like anatomy and play like, oh, okay, that's that muscle, that's that muscle, that's that muscle. Um, those muscles usually aren't the strongest. They're not. They're the most defined. Yeah. They're the most defined, and that person has got a really um, sort of specific body composition. Coming back to talking about that body composition, but they're not going to be the strongest. You know, um, you go to a Mr. Olympia, and the people that are up on stage probably aren't even the strongest people in the room. You know, because you've got you've got powerlifters, you've got strongmen that actually that, that follow it. You know, and, and and go along, and you know what? Like a lot of the time, the people that are strongest and just able to shift the amount of mass and normally the like the the guys that are carrying the most mass you know not the ones that have shredded as much body fat as possible you know it's it's the guys that are eating eight thousand ten thousand calories a day like eddie hall you know like um like like um thor you know the mountain from game of thrones yeah like they eat a lot of food to have a lot of mass to move a lot of mass you know whereas a bodybuilder will deliberately get as much muscle but then get as get rid of as much body fat as possible. So they're actually sacrificing mass and and usually strength. Usually strength in terms um, they sacrifice strength for muscle muscle size yeah. and definition. You know. So again, well, yeah, see, those- if, if you go to the gym and you see anyone who's doing like a bodybuilding routine, they'll be doing some probably weight that you know put similar level to what you might lift, but they're doing it like you know, like fifty reps or something ridiculous yeah. like that. And- a lot of reps, a lot of sets, a lot of time under yeah. tension, so actual sort of slow reps as well. Yeah. You know, let let those muscle fibers tie, uh, tear. There, there, there is a there is a big difference between training for muscle size and muscle strength as well. Is, you know? it's, none of it's easy. That's that's the thing. <laughs> like you, whether you do one rep max or you do like your proper bodybuilder training, like there's no there's there's no shortcut. There's no easy set of training. It doesn't matter. Whether you're doing exactly. slightly lighter weights, if you're doing 50 reps or whatever, like drop sets, he's still going to be knackered. Definitely, um, definitely, bro. You know, and like you say, in terms of getting the most out of your time, your effort, and your money, you know, knowing which of those you're actually trying to develop and 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 wanting to develop that's most important to you yeah. is so important. You know, because you might spend six six months in the gym training with him down there just because he's doing a lot of strength training. You know, when you then go out to go even like the, like the leg training and stuff like that, you might be doing some heavy squats. You go out to go cycling with your kids. Like that's why you started training. You go to go on a bike ride with the kids and you get like a mile in and your heart rate can't keep up and your, your thigh muscles are shot because they're really strong, but there's no endurance there, you know? So that is exactly like Hatham just says, both of those routes are going to be challenging and they're going to take time and effort and focus. So I guess pick pick the right one before you start, you know, have a think about what is actually important to you and your idea of fitness, you know, and, and where you'd actually like to improve and get better. Um, okay, guys. And then I think the last one of these that we've got to talk about is, of course, body composition. So like I mentioned earlier on, it's the relative uh, ratio of um, fat uh, mass to fat-free mass, you know. So how much fat have you got against vital organs, muscles, uh, and bone in the body, you know, and again... That is where we might have um, skin, uh, like skin fold calipers, where you might just almost like a pair of tweezers kind of thing. That'll sort of like you'll get a, uh, like someone's body parts here. You want to do the back of their arm. You'll get the calipers. You'll give them a, a little nip. You'll come away and you'll be like, all right, there's a centimeter, two centimeters of body fat or whatever it is, you know. And from there, you can do conversions into percentages and stuff like that. We don't need to worry too much about that. Um, but like I mentioned earlier on, you know, and I always do like to mention it when we come round to it, everybody's body composition is going to be different. We are all different. We are all individuals. We are all unique. There's no reason for us to have the same body composition as somebody else, really, because our day to day looks different. You know what we need our body to do on a daily basis, the hobbies that we do, any potential sports, the way that we train, the way that we eat. 
you know, like like I say, we're we're all individuals. Um, and like I say, there is there is no right and there's no wrong body composition. You know, there's some that's healthier than others. There's some that's unhealthier than others, and that goes both ways. Like zero percent body fat isn't a healthy place to be at. Like it's really not. Really, it's really not. Is it? I think you die. I, yeah, I, I don't I don't think you can. To be honest, I think I know, the Ronnie, lowest. Ronnie Coleman seen... claimed that he was he was um less than one percent, but I think that was just because. They couldn't really effectively test it at the time, so they, right, okay. they, their test okay. showed that. that. Be but mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. you would die, right? Like, there's no way your body could survive with zero fat. Well, well, it, it, exactly. You know, like I don't see how it how it would be possible. Like I, I've 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 never seen it done, and like I've seen people out there claiming to be zero percent body fat, but I can't imagine how anybody could do proper the proper tests yeah and and they come back on on zero percent body fat that's for sure you know Why would you want to even be? then like you like you say buddy to get under i would say to get under eight certainly under eight percent body fat is going to be a temporary thing yeah. in a lot of people it's going to be a temporary thing do it for your holiday do it for eight percent do it for a photo shoot do you know what i mean eight percent is meant for a photo shoot like you don't have yeah, to be really. Wanna, really I mean, if you, if you want yeah. to do like I don't know, you want to run the Great North Run or a marathon or yeah. whatever, yeah, yeah, it might be worth being under. I mean, I think the the lowest I've ever been is under ten, and I didn't, I didn't feel very good. I don't think I'm, I haven't yeah. done it yeah. in a while, you know, but you... I'll not be under ten now. I can tell you that much after the last week. Um, <laughs> but, I am sure, mate. I'm sure. Just like, do you want to be? Do you need to be under that? Really? Like I was saying exactly. before, like I, I know people who weigh like two stone more than me but can run like a 10k in like an, a six minutes quicker and it's like yeah. so, okay well great like it's it's not the be all and end all and it helps it definitely helps like mm-hmm. you know if your body composition and you've got like 20 percent body fat you're going to struggle to run a marathon probably i'd of imagine course. of course yeah but if you can still do it at a quite a high level which i know people who can that, that can do it i mean like Tyson Fury fights at like a ridiculous weight and a ridiculous body fat percentage. Like yeah. you just have to look at him. He, he's got fat. He's got pockets of fat on him. And, and yeah, or you so, wouldn't look at him and think he was an athlete. I don't no. think. But he's yeah. got phenomenal yeah. cardio and and reaction time and and everything. Like he's he's got multiple components of fitness without having the body composition to back it up. Really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ex- 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 exactly, buddy. You know. Um, and and like like you say, it's 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 gonna be different for everybody based on what it is that you actually need your your body to do, you know. And like we sort of say, someone who's up on stage and in a bodybuilding show, four percent body fat or three percent body fat or whatever it is, probably you know, it might be look to look at and say, do you know what? I wish I looked like that, or it'd be nice to look like that. But that person in that state might not be able to get through your day to day life well do you know the, what i mean the other like, thing with that is like what, what i always come back to with that and people obsess over it and that but like they're not well those people aren't well when you see them on stage like they're dehydrated they've got no food in them like yeah. it's, it, it's not a good way to be is it like it's not healthy yeah yeah it, it's it's like i say i've got a lot of respect for the the effort and the commitment that goes into it like massively massively but it's not the it's not the the pinnacle of health they don't is do it, it you know, like like you say, so, but... like it's it's not like they're doing no, that. No, exactly. Five, you know, that... <laughs> exactly, but <laughs> really good point, mate. You know, body composition is always going to change. It's always going to fluctuate. So it's handy to have a bit of an idea how to just keep an eye on yours, I guess. And you can even get scales now that you can stand on that will give you like a rough reading, like just through your bare feet. You know, it's um, it's 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 mad what we can do with technology these days. But um, yeah, like I say, just. It's it's one of those that's always going to be changing. It's almost harder to keep it in one place and keep it where it is than it is to just control which direction it's going in and just manage it that way, you know. So so yeah, definitely. When it comes to body composition, we've got to get rid of this idea that there is a, a correct body composition or a right way to look, um, because that is that is um, of course not the case. We all we're all totally different, and we need our body to do different things. Uh, Okay, guys, so rolling on, we have got our um, five components of skill-related fitness, which are agility, balance, coordination, power, and reaction time as well, yeah? So um, when it comes to agility, so we're thinking about the ability of a sports performer to quickly and precisely move or change direction without losing their balance. Somebody like a a dancer, a skater, you know, that sort of thing. Um, Even if you're... um, 
like when you say like the dog training and they're doing the agility and stuff like that to where they're running in between like the poles and stuff like that, you know, really, really interesting to see. Um, but, but yeah, it's not just, it's not just speed. It's not just pure speed. It's um, being able to change direction quickly without losing your balance as well. So of course, really, really handy to a lot of sports as well, I guess, you know, and um, if you're thinking about like American football, rugby, I guess, like anything where you've got to like feign one way to look like you're going to be in one place and then change direction and actually be somewhere else. Like George, George, George Best was one of the best I've ever seen do that. You know, like looks like shape your whole body up. Like you're going to be in one place and then just like totally just send everybody the wrong way. Like it was absolutely amazing at it, you know? Um, but, but yeah, it even comes into sports like that where contact sports, normally the aim of the game is to not get contacted. That yeah. was always my game, my aim when I was playing rugby. If someone cr- crashes into us, I've done something wrong, you know? So, um, yeah, it, it, even, even with that sort of thing, it's, it, it's quite handy. Um, having that little bit of agility, um, when it comes to balance, we're thinking about, um, maintaining your center of mass over a base of support. So, of course, when you're just standing and you're thinking about being balanced, it is your two feet under your hips, which are normally stacked under your chest, under your head, pretty much, you know. So your center of gravity is all sort of straight downwards. Um, And just being able to maintain it there, you know, how well can you keep your balance then if you lift one foot, you know, if you were to lift one foot and try and stand on one leg, uh, you know, if you've ever seen like there's a, it's funny, there's there's like like a thigh stretch. There's like a, yeah, there's like a quadricep stretch down the front of your leg where you'll sort of like stand and pull your heel in towards your bum. Like, I don't know if you'll, uh, you'll probably see it. Like, you'll just be standing up, you'll be on one foot and the other, the other leg will be sort of, your heel will be pulled up towards your bum and you'll be stretching down your thigh. The amount of people in the, over the years that have got to like go over and grab grip. hold of something. Yeah. yeah, go and grab hold of something, grab hold of the machine yeah, that's nearby or yeah, like grab one of them mates and they're both like clinging onto each other for support, you know? And, and, and it is, it's, that's, that's what we're thinking about, where we're thinking about balance. Um, but we've actually got two types of balance. So we've got static balance, which might be like a handstand where you're into a position, hold it, don't lose your balance sort of thing. Whereas you've got dynamic balance as well, which is maintaining your balance throughout a movement, which might be more like a cartwheel. Um, and again, thinking about like the Olympic divers, you know, uh, gymnasts, that sort of thing. And um, some of the positions, that, some of the rotations and the flips and stuff that they do while Staying perfectly in control of it is is absolutely mind blowing from an out from a, a spectator's point of view. You know, it's funny. If, it's one of them things. It doesn't look that difficult if you've never done it. You're like, oh, okay, but like if you've ever been on a trampoline and got to do a front flip or a back flip or something like that, and like within seconds you've lost like your bearings, like where's up, where's down, mm-hmm. what's going on? Like it, 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 that's all it takes really. So be able to maintain your balance throughout all of that is 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 a, again like almost a different skill in itself you know and um, so when we're thinking about sort of um static balance of course again there's certain stuff within gym- gymnastics that you might need um i'm trying to think of any more off the top of my head um if you if you've got any that you can think of buddy you know well, static weightlifting, balance. weightlifting i guess yeah at the very top of a, they have to hold it don't they have to, yes of course you, yeah. you do a clean and press and the bars up there like if you yeah. haven't got balance you kind of maintain that over the base of support of you, you know, your, your body basically. Yeah. And, and you lose it. You're not getting, yeah. you're not getting the points for that. Aye, aye. And it's coming down, it's coming down over pretty hard and pretty fast as well. Oh yeah. yeah. There's, no, uh, uh, there's no messing about with like a couple of hundred kilos. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Like, no exactly. Um, I guess static balance is it's a tough one, isn't it? Really? It is in terms of its application into sports because there's not many, Static sports. Yeah, I can think of, you um, know, golf maybe. But um, yeah, that's that, that's that's a good shout if you're as well. Off but, balance yeah. when you hit the ball, you're not going to be hitting it right, are you? I suppose. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And then of course we've got that dynamic balance, which might be more like again, like even if you see some somebody go 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 for a header off a corner, do you know what I mean? You've you've got to control that balance. Like you don't see Cristiano Ronaldo go up and like bang a header in and like land on his tailbone. Yeah. Do you? Like he lands on his feet on his way down. Just running, like you were saying, like trying to change yeah. direction. Obviously, if, if you step to the right or the left or you turn around or whatever and you just complete, yeah. you, if you didn't have any balance, you, your body would just be like a, a rag doll. Exactly. Which sometimes you see if, the, if you're running at speed and, and sometimes the players just they completely lose the footing and, and like they often do that thing where they'll try and keep it 
and they end up in like a weird sort of like hunched over and they're like, oh, legs, yeah. the legs are just underneath them and they're just desperately, desperately trying to get and they just can it because yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's horrible. Mm. Tired, fatigued. Yeah, in and yeah that's it. Kind just of kind of get Kind of get your legs called up there at yeah. that point. They're, just, they're under you, and you just kind of get you kind of get your back straight yeah. again. And yeah. You, you, yeah, you're in that spiral where you know you're going down, but there's nothing <laughs> you can do about it. But you will fight it for as yeah. long as possible. Like <laughs> I, I did that once on, on on the beach on holiday. I remember running down the beach and just like absolutely stubbed this bit of sand. Yeah, and I was just so top heavy, mate. But I just kept going for so far. <laughs> and I was I was just one of them. Mate. You go and eventually, there's no way yeah. back from that. There's no way back, like when you're on the way down. It's, like, desperate. That's it. it's like a desperate one or two seconds where it's like, I can catch this, I can catch this, and you know you can't. It is, uh, yeah. Yeah, you end up doing like that Naruto run with yeah, your arm. Yeah, you, you're, you're like this, you're, you're, sort of, you're, you're running like that, and then all of a sudden your back's here, and it's like... Yeah, that's it, like lately. <laughs> it's quality, man. Quality. <sighs> Awful. Um, okay, guys, so um, a good one to sort of link in with, with the tennis that you were on about earlier on, buddy, uh, coordination. Uh, the smooth flow of movement needed to perform a multitasking uh, efficiently and accurately, you know. And again, like um, you're going to any racket sport where you've got to see a ball coming at you and hit it back, it's so much harder than it looks like. I remember going up like we used to have like like um like just a tennis court and like a tennis net nearby, and I I remember going up a couple of times with my mates. We're like, ah, oh, my dad's got like a couple of rackets. We'll go up, take a ball, mate. Just they, even just the idea of just hitting the ball when it comes to you. It's so much harder than than I expected it to be. Well, it's you know, the, it's the accuracy thing, isn't it? Like I, it anyone is. can hit the ball as hard as they physically can, but yeah, if it's not going in the court, then it's pointless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, putting it putting it in the right place as yeah. well. Yeah, you know, and the smooth flow as well. Like not doing a jagged motion. It's got to be like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's tall. When you watch them, like if you watch someone like like Federer or whatever, like he's just an absolute like magician, just sort of it. it you hit like a hundred mile an hour forehand, but looks like he's barely even hit the ball. Like he's yeah. just, just just like it's just like that, and it's it's gone the way yeah. hundred mile an hour. Yeah, it's just like, like I say you later. Mother. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. Like the level that the top guys are doing this sort of stuff, that's absolutely crazy. Like, and again with with, with coordination, I mean, like I'm I I I'm reluctant to class darts as a sport. Okay. It's no, a, it requires a sport. I think it's a bit ha- much. Pastime, pastime, yeah. hobby, hobby. Yeah, yeah. It's a game. I would say it's a game. I'll do it. Yeah, I, d- I don't know if it can be a sport if you can have a if you have a pint like in between <laughs> every turn. I don't know if it counts as a sport, but even stuff like that coordination, like right, I've got to I've got to release the dart in the right place, get it to, get it to go exactly where I'm trying to. Yeah, you know, um, coordination again, like the first thing I think of with coordination with being a bit of a musician is of course like being on the drums and you've got different limbs doing different things all at the same time or if you've ever picked up a guitar yeah. what's it like when you're trying to do like the fret hand and the strumming hand at the same time yeah. you know that that sort of coordination it's keyboard you play the melody with i think your left hand and the right hand plays the tune that's, i think so yeah you know if you try and do it sit down and try and play the keyboard dm me it's, oh, uh, I... it's something else yeah yeah definitely you know and again coordination is usually one of those things where you've got to normally work on the specific thing that you're trying to improve at? Yeah, if you watch, um, it's a little bit more reaction times as well. But if you watch like any kind of, even like gamers do it, like the, the esports players, but also like F1 drivers do it, um, tennis players do it as well. It's like a big board of um, like lights. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. It. Uh-huh. It, it's yeah. reaction time, but it's also coordination because they're not just hitting them. They're hitting, yeah. they'll, they'll be like a targeted set of lights that they're doing and stuff and yeah it, it, you've got to hit the right one yeah, yeah. And if you don't hit the right one you get a penalty on your score sort of thing so it, it yeah. takes it off if you're hitting the wrong ones yeah um, and that's a more yeah. task that you're doing efficiently and accurately um, yeah but even you just driving like that you know if you don't turn the wheel at the right time you're not going to make the corner you know changing, I mean? yeah. you, you, changing driving gear. the shop yeah, yeah. changing gear that any of that has to be yeah. at the right time um and you'll notice when you when you're a little bit like tired or whatever that's these things start to fade <laughs> so you oh, might definitely. be in the wrong gear at the wrong time or you might stall your car or you might miss the turn because you're just like ah oh, didn't yeah. get it missed yeah, it well that's it Wasn't yeah, attention. Definitely. yeah it's why you start to see the best athletes in the world start to make mistakes towards the end of a game or the end yeah. of a match just for tired and fatigue and you know what the guys on the other team are just able to go that little bit longer before they start to fatigue that's sometimes what it is you know um, especially when it comes to like concentration and coordination and stuff like that. Um, 
So, 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 yeah, like it, it's it's in a lot more aspects of our life than we realise. Not just fitness, you know, like you say, buddy. Even even little things like getting getting in the car and stuff like how, that. How many times when you're tired do you go to pick something up and you just like completely drop it? Oh or, yeah, or you, you go like yeah. that and you just knock like three or four things on the floor and it's just oh my god. Yeah, yeah. About when you wake up tired in the middle of the night and you like go to yeah. go to the toilet and you like bounce into a door frame yeah. or something on the way through just because you're not like fully woken up yet. <laughs> Um, not, not fun. No, but like I say, definitely usually one of those where it's like if you want to get better coordination at hitting the ball with a racket, yeah, like that's what you need to be doing to improve in that. Like you could get better at other forms of coordination, but you're not necessarily going to get any better at that one thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, just because you're really good at hitting the ball with a racket doesn't mean that you'd be good at something like that do you know what i mean it doesn't necessarily transfer over so coordination is one of those that we're all kind of always working on anyway but we definitely um need, need to be mindful of um then we've got power which is more sort of um so it's force in kilograms times distance in meters yeah so if you've thrown something you know how much did it weigh how far has it gone and that'll give you an idea what that power is, you know. Like I used to get people to do um like a medicine ball throw where they would literally come out of a squat and like at the top of the squat, they'd throw the medicine ball and release it and just see how far it could go. And it's like, okay, this one is three kilograms and you've got it this distance, you know. In order to test that again, I would need to use the same weight and then see, did it go that little bit further? You know, there's different ways to develop power. Um, you know, and, and if, if you've ever heard me or hear them mention the, like this idea of plyometrics or something like that, you know, which is pretty much it's explosive training, really, you know, it's just like maximum output for like one rep and then same again on the next rep, isn't it? You know, like a, a jump and lunge or a jump squat, you'll do a squat, but then you will jump as high as you can, you yeah. know, because that is getting your, it's force. It might be your body weight, whatever it is, 70 kilograms, and you might be getting however far off the floor, you know, that's exactly the same sort of thing, you know, where it comes to, when it comes to power, um, we are, we're just thinking about the work done in a unit of time, um, in terms of how much mass has actually been moved and how far it's gone. So, so that is, um, that's power. And then coming back to the one that you mentioned a second ago, buddy, is reaction time. Goes really, really well with coordination because normally you need to react to something and be coordinated enough to deal with it. Like if you react to something, but you've got no coordination, like in this example, if you're a goalkeeper, if you react, you know, you, you react to put your hands up, but you haven't actually put them in the way of where the ball is. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got the, you've got the reaction time there, but the coordination to get your hand in the right place isn't there. You know, whereas when it, when it comes to um, like, like being sort of the other way around, you might have um, a goalkeeper that's got the coordination, but not the reaction time, you know, like they might have saved it if they'd reacted, but they didn't react because the reaction time wasn't there. So again, you know, they kind of go hand in hand quite a lot. Um, but it's, it's pretty much just the time taken for a performer, usually a sports performer, to respond to a stimulus and the initiation of their, respo uh, their response. So this might be like a goalkeeper making a, a save like we've got on the picture there. Like um, if the ball takes a deflection on the way through, does it hit a defender? Do you know what I mean? Or maybe a free kick comes past a lot of bodies and the keeper doesn't see it till late. Like can they still react to it to make that save? Or are you sort of like just stood there in the ball past you in the back of the net before you've even realised it, you know? Um so again, like reaction times uh, are really, really important in sports because like in sports and competitive sports, how often is that second or a split second, like the difference either in getting to a loose ball or being the first one off the starting line when the gun goes and stuff like that reaction time can make or break like. It, it can it can make the difference between a world record or not. It can be the difference between making the podium or not, winning a medal or not. Like it's it is it's 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 one of them really. You know, we we saw the other night. You know, if a keeper makes one save, like you're looking yeah. at a different game. You know, um, and it's it's like amazing some of the ways that they'll train. Specifically, goalkeepers is probably what I've seen the most of when it comes to reaction time. Um, and you see where they've got like this big plastic wall like in front of the goalkeeper with like all these different shapes and bumps and bubbles and they just throw the football at it yeah. and it'll hit one of these things and bounce off and the keeper's got to react to it and try and make the stop. 
you know, which is one, um, one of the most simple ones I've seen. It might be one to try if you're looking at testing it. Is like you get someone to hold two tennis balls and they just drop one or the other and you have to catch it, but you don't know which one they're going to oh, drop. Okay. So yeah. you just they have two and every now and then they'll drop one or they'll go to drop one and drop the other. And it's just like, can you, yeah. you have to have your hands like that and you have to turn and catch whichever oh, one. So you've got to like invert and catch the yeah. right one. Yeah. It's re- like it looks really easy, but it's actually mm-hmm. so difficult. It's so frustrating as well. When you That's go to it. catch the wrong one, you're like, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I'm going to give that a go. This or you can get play. like, uh, you can get a ball where it's like not quite round. And when you bounce it, obviously it changes direction and, and you've got to catch yes. that. Uh-huh. So if you throw it at the uh-huh. wall, it won't come straight back at you. It might go off on a slight angle. And can you, uh-huh. can you get up and catch it as well? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's funny. That the dog's got one of them that's like yeah. egg-shaped. Yeah. It bounces like you don't know where it's going to go. That but... sort of thing. It's really, cool. it's like really good and you realise, like, oh, bloody hell, like some days you're on it. And like yes. you feel like Neo yeah. from the Matrix, mm-hmm. and then other days yeah. it's just like it sails past you, and you just like, yeah, yeah. Sooner or later, someone's like, oh yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe should have gone for that. <laughs> yeah, but but it is. It's exactly the same. Like reaction time can be very similar to coordination, and I guess all of these different components of fitness really. Like if you're not at an optimal point of health in terms of the, the sleep that you've had, how well rested you are, how well hydrated you are, the the nutrition that you've been getting through your food, oh, you're all, well. all, you know, all of these can start to, can start to slip. Yeah, yeah. So again, it's it's reason, more reason that we've got to stay on top of it. You know, the food that we eat and our lifestyle. It's not all just to do with sort of weight weight gain and weight loss. You know, it um it, it massively massively impacts them um, the rest of our health and our and our sort of fitness you know all of these different areas that we're looking at this morning um okay guys so we've looked at um there's those different components of fitness and I had a little bit of a recap so when it comes to different fitness testing methods um like i say we've mentioned some of them already this morning but there's there's a lot of different ways you can test fitness you know um athletes sports performers whether you're in whether you're just in a gym whether you're dual public whether you're, you're just training with a pt there's lots of different ways that you can um, actually test your own fitness so so like we mentioned earlier on we've got your resting heart rate you know um just getting your two like your two fingers and putting like them on your pulse either on your on your wrist or in your neck um and same again how many times does your heart beat in 60 seconds um, so how how hard is your heart working while you're not doing any exercise? You know, gives you an idea of how how fit you are because of course the aim that a lot of us exercise for is to be fitter when we're not exercising. You know, so that's a really good one to keep uh, keep track of how hard is your heart working while you're sitting on the couch? Because if it's working hard while you're sitting on the couch, you know it's going to be a lot harder when you start getting up and moving. Um, blood blood pressure is another one um, that we can use. Obviously, using like proper proper monitors if you ever if you ever had one of the inflatable cuffs on you know that'll go on sort of like your upper arm and then starts to inflate like a big old swimming uh, swimming armband you know um that'll give you an idea of again how what's the the pressure within like inside your heart and inside your um blood vessels while your heart is squeezing to pump blood and while it is expanding again to start the process again which is why when you get your blood pressure done you get two numbers you get sort of like the pressure in your heart while it's pumping and then the pressure in your heart while it's releasing as well. Um, and we've got our BMI, which is our um, body mass index, which is a it's a chart. If you've never come across it before, you'll essentially find your height in in feet and, and inches, and then you'll find your height, uh, you'll find your weight in kilograms or stone or whatever it might be. And then you literally just find where they match up on this chart, and it gives you like a score, and it can give you a rough idea where you are in terms of how heavy you are for your height. Like, don't get me wrong, like, that's kind of all BMI is good for. It'll tell you, you know, where, where you are in terms of your weight against your height. Um, but it's not the be-all and end-all. Like, you know, someone who's carrying a decent amount of lean muscle mass, you know, a lot of athletes would do a BMI test and actually come back as overweight, you know, potentially even obese. You know, I remember saying once upon a time there was a story, I was a, a bodybuilder had been told he was obese, but he was like 3% body fat or something like that, just because of the way that the BMI, the BMI worked. Now, if you're down the other end of the scale, you know, um, it, it, it can work pretty well. And especially if you are quite new to fitness, the chances are that you're carrying so much muscle mass is pretty slim, to be honest. You know, if you're not really doing exercise, if you're pretty new to exercise, you're probably not going to find yourself in that position. So it can give you a little bit of an idea where you are in terms of, like I say, just your, your, your weight to your height. 
But um, I, I certainly don't put too much stock on it. And it's, like I say, it's not the end of the world. Um, then we've got our one rep max mentioned earlier on again, as much weight on the bar for whatever lift it is that you're going to do. It doesn't have to be a barbell. It can be a dumbbell curl. You could do a dumbbell curl, one, one, one rep max with a dumbbell in each hand. You can use a bar, whatever it is, as much weight on as you can. One rep, full rep, you know, complete, full range of motion. If you don't get there, it's too heavy. The weight needs to come down a little bit. Um, but yeah, one rep max the maximum weight you can do one repetition with. And like I say, a really good idea of muscular strength. Sit and reach is the one that I'd mentioned where you'll sit with your foot against the box, reach forward and try and get kind of as far as you can to test how flexible you are. And the skin fold calipers, like I'd mentioned, uh, they're almost like the, uh, the little, the little tweezers. It's like tweezers meets a protractor, you know, like you used to use in school to like measure angles and stuff like that. And it will, it'll just, um, it'll give you an idea just sort of in one particular area, be it the back of the arm, be it the shoulder blade, like the, the, like the, the, the waistline or the midriff, you know, and again, it'll just give you an idea of how many millimeters, centimeters, body fats there. And from there you can do conversions into percentages and stuff like that. Um, but like, like we sort of mentioned earlier on in the session and, and something that I'm always sort of going on about is make sure that the method of testing that you've picked is actually related to the component that you're trying to pick, you know, and again, hopefully now it makes it, it's a little bit clearer why it would be, it would, it wouldn't be the best idea for me to say, I want to, um, I'm working on getting aerobically fitter. I want to be able to run a little bit faster. I want to be able to get across this distance a little bit quicker, you know, keep up with the classes that I've got to teach without being out of breath if i'm working on you know that sort of thing i want to be looking at okay i want to look at my rest and heart rate how hard is my heart working you know when i'm not doing an exercise class what's my blood pressure like how well is my is my heart coping with all of this you know like my bmi isn't really going to give me any indication whether i'm getting further forward whether i'm not getting further forward and um, a one rep max won't a sit and reach test won't so i've got to pick the specifically the right things and when you're the instructor in this position that's where it comes back to what we mentioned earlier on like if you've got to start building up trust with the client you've got to show them whether what you're doing is working and is going to work and if you just like get them to do a fitness test or a fitness assessment and you just don't pick anything that actually highlights the progress that they've made, you know, you're potentially missing out on a chance to grow that and develop that relationship there because, you know, you you might be mo moving them in the right direction, you know, but they might not be able to see it yet. They might not feel it yet. And you might not be able, you might not be actually showing them, you know. So, again, we, we, we've always got to be thinking about who is the testing for? Is it for yourself? Is it for somebody else? What are their goals? And then being being smart about the the testing that we're that we're picking. You know, if you were to just do a fitness assessment, you might do all of these. To be fair, you know, you might go in and do all of these, like sort of like a almost like we would do if we were able to do the drop ins in person, like the human MOT. Do you know what I mean? Like go in, check what's going on, track all of these, and then you can track them all again at a later date. You know, if you're just going in and you've not got much time in the gym, you've got to get your session in as well. You know, you want to be a bit more specific with the uh, the testing methods that you're actually using. Um. Okay, guys. Okay, so this... I don't know whether that's going to try and spin onto the next slide. It doesn't like this slide for some reason. It freezes up. It freezes up. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it, it is. Must be too high quality. Maybe, yeah, that's it. That's it. Especially with me being on the hotspot today, man. We got no <laughs> chance. We got no chance. Hey, do you know what? Touchwood, Touchwood, we're doing all right. It is so far. We're doing so all right. Um, gonna see it. We have jinxed us now, but you haven't. <laughs> um, okay, guys. So just while we're on this slide here, of course, we can get a look at some of the equipment that we've just sort of mentioned. Um, of course, top right, we've got the blood pressure monitor, the inflatable cuff that will go on and, and, and test what your blood pressure is doing. And of course, we've got the bathroom scales down in the bottom right where you can check your physical weight. Um, and again, some some are smart enough now to tell you your body composition, how much water are you carrying, how, how, how much of your mass is lean mass. You know, it depends what sort of setup you've got and what kit you've got access to. Um, of course, bottom left, we've got the guy who's just got the old trusty stopwatch. You know, I always used to, uh, I'd always have my stopwatch on us. Um, I actually ended up getting um, like a wristwatch. Um, it was like a G-Shock, I think. And it came with like a little stopwatch and a timer in it. Nice. And, you know, I was just, just constantly, constantly on the go, timing different stuff. Of course, I was timing like rounds for circuits and stuff like that at, at that point. But really, really handy for again, right, I've done a lap. What was my time? Click it. I've done another lap. What was my time? Click it. Um, 
anything to do with sort of um, endurance, you know, how fast can you do 50 tuck jumps, that sort of thing. Your stopwatch is going to be really, really helpful for that. Um, the lady in the top left is doing the rest and heart rate thing or potentially the work and heart rate thing if she's just finished the workout. Um, and, of course, one that Haytham mentioned earlier on, we can see that she's actually got like one of them, um, it's like wearable tech, isn't it, you know, on, on, a, on, a, on a wrist. It might be giving her a rest and heart rate and she's actually just checking it, you know, to see how, how, how far off her, her reading is. That might also be telling you, you know. I don't know if there's probably, I don't know if there's ones out there that will tell you your body composition now. Do you know what I mean? If scales can do it through reading through your feet, it wouldn't surprise me if there's sort of like higher tech, um, yeah, maybe. like sure. sports watches and bands and stuff like that that can do the same these days, you know. Um, I used to have one that used to, I don't know, again, how accurate it was, but it used to give me an idea of how much oxygen was in my blood, like a, like a blood oxid, oxidization yeah. sort of test. Um, but again, you know, they, these wearable techs, they can, they can tell you how well you're sleeping. Do you know what I mean? Like some of the stuff that, that we can do that we didn't really have access to, what, 10 years ago? Mainstream. Mainstream, you know, people had them. People had them, but you didn't see them on nearly anywhere near as many people as you do now. Like I know Mel's, Mel's got one for the dog, and she? Diego's got one. Yeah, he's got a fit, a fit bark. Fit bark, yeah. I'm definitely going to have to get one for, for Pooch. Like definitely, um, I've, got, I've got to have one of them. Um. But yeah, you know, there's 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 so much wearable tech out there and it is so affordable. You know, you can get like even a basic one of these. I think Alex got us for like 20 quid. Yeah, 20, and 30 it, pound it, roughly. And it, it does the job. And you know what? Mine's a proper Samsung one. That Yeah, it's got more bells and whistles, but it, that just kills the battery. Mine needs charging yeah. every night. So the fact that it, it, it reads how well you sleep is no good to me because it's on, it's on the yeah. charger, you know, whereas she's got one that was 20 quid and the battery will last like four days because all it does is like how many steps have you done? What's your heart rate doing? And how well are you sleeping? You know, so again, think about what it is that you need it for. And um, yeah, there's definitely sort of cheaper options out there and, and, and more available. That's for sure. Um, so that'll about do us for... I hate going back to that last slide. Yeah, that'll about do us for um, talking about um, sort of testing kits and stuff like that. If you've got any questions about you know, anything that you've come across before, maybe there's any tests that have been done on, on you in the gym before that you're not sure about what they were testing for, you know, by all means, give 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 us a shout. If there's any of that that's um, that's still maybe is leaving you a little bit confused, please, by all means, let us know. Um, my email is usually, and I'm assuming it is, in the description for the, yeah, it is. It's in the descri de description for the video, as always, cheers, buddy. Um, so, yeah, definitely reach out and give us a shout if there's any of that that you're not so clear on. Um I just want to take a little bit of a sidestep and thinking about stepping into the shoes of the instructor now who's doing a carrying out a fitness assessment on somebody else. You know, we've maybe narrowed down what is the appropriate testing to be doing based on what that client's goals are. But of course, planning the tests and knowing what you need to do is is a different it's a different animal to actually carrying out the fitness test with somebody that you've maybe only known five minutes, ten minutes you know, because um, it's going to be something that you do quite early on in their training. Maybe it's at, at a push, maybe someone that you've known for a week or two, you know. Um, so it goes both ways, you know. You've got to be comfortable. They've got to be comfortable. Um, and, 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 of course, like I sort of mentioned earlier on, it's almost like the first. It's planting the seed for what the rest of the relationship can or might go on to be, you know, and, and, and just managing that sort of relationship with that client as well because, do you know what? For all you can, you can know the information, you can know the knowledge. Um, if you haven't got that relationship with a client, like they're not going to buy into it. Like it's, 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 it's tough. You know, it's, it, it is about your personal skills as well as knowing about fitness, knowing about the human body, knowing about these different components of fitness. Um, like your people skills is absolutely massive in, in that job in particular. You know, I always found, um, I've mentioned before, there was a lot who, who went through the same course as me. And started in the same gym, and do you know what he was? He was he was on the ball. He just done his sports science degree. He knew he knew all of it. He could talk. Back then, he could probably still have run rings around me. Now, if that makes sense, he probably back then knew more than I know now still. But he just couldn't get it across to a client. He couldn't walk up to somebody on the gym floor and introduce himself and build start to build up those skills, get clients to buy into him, um, and 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 of course, sort of keep keep coming back as well. You know, because as much as, of course, as a self-employed PT, you need the business, 
clients need to be consistent to get the results. You know, some of that we're always on about. Anybody needs to be consistent to get results. So you've got to have, um, you've got to be nurturing that relationship, I guess, um, throughout. Is that anything you've ever really thought about, buddy? Just because I know that you've been on the receiving end of PT. Do you know what I mean? You've 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 been in the position where you've been sort of like the client. Is 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 there anything that you've really sort of thought about your relationship with 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 the trainer? You know, and how much trust you've got in them? Because I imagine that there's somebody that you've obviously um, come come to d- develop trust in over time. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I didn't really, I didn't seek them out. Really, it okay, was just, okay. I, I I knew them from the gym, and he was like, "Do, do you want to do this?" And I was like. I'd already known him at that point, like yeah, play football yeah. a few times, and I was just like, "I'm right, down, neighbor." Yeah, and yeah. Like, I'll do his routine and like a program and that, and so he did. Yeah. Um, and do you think that made, that might have made that easier to say yes? Oh, like definitely. I, I would never right. uh, before that. I would never have gone and sought out that level of um, like detail. Yeah. And and like one to one or one to two, like there's always at least usually two of us would do the sessions. Yeah. Um, whether we had the exact same goals or whatever, not necessarily, but there yeah. was overlap, so we, we could do the strength training or whatever the session was. But yeah, I think I personally would never have sought that out. So knowing someone and then them saying, oh, do you want to do that? was just like, oh, yeah, sure, why not? Like, got no better to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm already I'm... here. I'm sort of just doing all that stuff anyway like I'm, I'm yeah. doing a lot of it if you could tell us mm-hmm. how to do it a bit better that would be probably good that'd be great thank you yeah yeah, um, yeah def- and definitely that, buddy that's, you that's know? my route into a lot of things like that though like i probably would never seek it out just comes to you yeah, yeah. but that that's you know that's where being proactive comes in i suppose yeah yeah definitely definitely you know um from the, from but, their point of view like yeah. and, and realizing that i ah, okay you know that, that might work and, and they wouldn't have done that if they didn't think they could help. If that makes sense. Wouldn't just do it for the sake. Oh, definitely. Um, exactly, exactly. You know, I've spoke to clients and then put them onto a different trainer altogether when I found out what, what their goals were. Maybe they had a bit of an insight into their sort of mentality and that sort of thing. What's yeah. their driving? Well, like, that's it as well for me. Driving. Like, that, that's the other thing. Like, I, I, I respond a lot better when, if someone's telling us to do something, if they know what they're talking about in terms of specifically like the routine that they're putting us on, for example, in this case. Yeah. So like I know that yeah. the PT that I was with does this all the time, like mm-hmm. train trains that way, seen seen them do it, done a session yes. with them where they've trained as well. So I know that they know what they're talking about when it comes to doing this like leg session or whatever. Like they've done it. Yeah. They know how hard it is. Mm-hmm. They know what the results are and they, they can do it. And that to me gives me a lot more confidence. Than, yeah. than someone yeah, just definitely. printing out a sheet of paper off a computer and saying they ain't gone. Like, well, okay. Yeah, yeah. That. With a session plan that they've probably copy and pasted from somewhere else yeah. anyway. Like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like you say, but it goes a long way though, doesn't it? You know, to start building up that relationship. And like, even if you say, if that's the first sort of connection that you've had with that person, you know, it's it's it, like you say, you you already knew that already knew the lad. Like, if that's somebody that you've never met before, like. You've obviously our first impression is going to be going to be so so much more sort of um, impactful, isn't mm. it? You know, it's it, it's going to leave like a like a, a, a much longer lasting sort of um, impression. That's for sure, you know. So again, that brings us to that first bullet point that we've got on the screen. There is kind of demonstrating throughout the whole thing, like from from the word go, um, that you're truthful and trustworthy. You know, like as the PT, like be honest like like sort of that's just triggered something there off what you said a minute ago buddy where you used to train with your mate and there'd be two years and there wasn't directly the same goals like i've seen i've seen pts over the years train two people with totally totally different goals just because getting them in together was the only way to get them to pay for the session you know, and it's a case of like, right, I'm, I'll just give you whatever to do then because there's no way that you should be training with you. I'm just going to give you something to do, you know. At least if there's a little bit of overlap, you pick, a PT can make it work. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it. it's obviously better to go out on record and say, first of all, you would get, you'd both get more benefit training separately. 
Do you know what I mean? We, we could specify things and, and, and make things a lot more individual if you're trained separately. There's no two ways about that. If that's not ideal and there are other ways to train, yeah, we can find a happy medium. Do you know what I mean? That might mean you might be sort of, rather than sort of in in sort of fifth gear and flying along and cruising towards your next goal, do you know what I mean? Like you might be down in fourth or third gear, you know, sort of getting there a little bit slower. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not on the... Uh, I guess that's the, you're not on the motorway, you're taking the, you're taking the scenic view because you get to take your mate with you. Like that's, that's the way that I would think about it, that sort of thing, you know, but again, just be honest and upfront from day one, like you two training together isn't going to get you where you would, where you want to be as fast as training separately would. That said and out the way with, if you still want to train together, happy days. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just, just getting essentially the obvious out there and getting it out the way with and just, just leveling with them. Like I'm not going to fill you, fill your head full of ideas that, you two should be training exactly the same way, just based on your build, never mind your goals, you know. But like I say, just 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 be honest. And again, like if, if someone asks you a question, like, and you don't know the answer, don't just don't just blag it. Just be honest and say, like, I don't know. I'll go and do a bit of research and I'll get back to you. Because, like, I don't know how you would feel as a client, but, like, my impression was always I would rather someone admitted that they didn't know something and actually went away and researched it so they knew the answer rather than just telling you something on the spot so it sounds like they always know the answer, you know? Like, I'd, I'd much rather show initiative to go away and learn something else. It's like, no, I've never trained anybody who's got um, chronic fatigue before, yeah. but I, I will go away and I will research it. And next week when we come in for your first session, I'm going to be on the ball and I'm going to be ready well, to go. Because it just... tells me that their plan's, like, going to be personalised. Of course. Where like, they, they just should... rifle off something, like, that's a bit of, like, a stock answer, then you'd probably be... A bit worried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was it. I mean, like, I remember having a conversation with one other PT at one point because the way that I used to do my inductions was I'd get people in, show them around the gym, and have a little bit crap with them, find out about them, and then book them in for a PT session like a taster. Yeah. Now, of course, if you do that, you run the risk of people never getting back in touch. They don't turn up for the session or whatever it is, and you've potentially lost your chance to sort of it's almost prove to them what you can do because that's, that's kind of what it is. You know, even if it's a case of look, if you never have, if you never pay for PT, just come to me if you've got any questions because I'm trying to show you that I can sort of be, be believed. You know, like that, like that's like that sort of thing. But like, like I say, getting getting off on on like a little bit of a tangent as well. But at the same time, it is it's it's just sort of like again being being totally totally open and and like yeah, I would rather go away and I would rather go and learn something new and add something else to my sort of my bag, you know, my repertoire sort of thing and add add to my skills that I'm actually able to do than sort of just stand there and say, just make something up. And I, j j just, yeah. uh, j j do you know what I mean? Just to sound like I, I always have the answer. Do you know what I mean? I would like to be thought of as somebody that will always find the answer for you, not someone who's already got the answer to go on day one. You know, as nice as that would be, it's not possible. Like nobody knows the answer to everything. So someone's either going to try and blag it so they look like they know or just hold the hands up and say, do you know what? I don't, I don't actually really know. Like, let, let's go away and do a little bit of research and come back to you. Yeah. You know, because like, like you say, it just shows you that the, your training is going to be personalised and it's not just, um, right, just, just do this. Because you know what? Like, if I would book somebody in for a separate session and they came back, I had a much better idea what they needed, what, what I should do in that session. If you've just met somebody for the first time and you show them around the gym floor, and then you try and squeeze a little half an hour of exercise in at the time. You've not, how do you personalize it? You know, you're either doing a session that you've thought of beforehand before you've met the person, in which case, how have you made it personal at all? You know, how have you not just thought like, oh, I'll do these basic exercises. That's not really personal, you know, um, getting them to do those exercises. Or you're saying to them, right, you go and get started and I'm going to sit here 10 minutes and write a session plan, which again, you know, it's an option. It's an option, but it doesn't look like I'm prepared, I'm ready to go. It's like you're then going to be watching me sitting there scratching my head, like trying to figure out what exercise to go with this. I'm going to be scribbling stuff out because I've changed my mind on what I think's best. I suppose like, with, with the basic ones, though, I guess if, if you're going to use it as like an assessment, that, that's fine. If you're going to get them to do some basic stuff and, and if they're not very forthcoming like with what they yeah. can do or what they want to do, you'd be like, yeah. right, okay, we're going to get out and we're going to do some of this and we're going to see how you... Um, how you get on with it and then you're making notes and you know 
roughly what the strengths and weaknesses are, and I suppose that can help as well. That's but exactly it. Just sending that. them off and being like, ah, go on, go and do yeah. like, you know, 10, 10 sets of five squats or whatever. Off you go, see you later. Yeah, then come back and tell us how tired you are after. Uh, like, that's no good. So it just depends on like your approach, I suppose. That's it. I mean, I did a little bit of both. Uh, what you just said there, but it was kind of the happy medium that I sort of managed to find later on in sort of like my PT career. You know, it was just a case of based on the individual that comes through the door, I get an idea of can I get them to do some basic stuff? Do I think they can squat? Do I think they can lunge? Can they press? You know, that sort of thing. And you can start to look at how people are going to move. You know, but again, it depends on the individual, you know, it depends like, is it somebody that you think is going to be a hard sell, you know, that's really quite skeptical, you know, and you really need to show them how personalized things can be, you know, because like there's some people in the mindset, like if you, you know, it's a sort of induction, they know it's an induction, but if you do the first thing and all you do is squats and stuff that they've done by themselves, they'll be like, well, don't need him. Don't need, don't need, don't need that person. I can do yeah. that by myself. So some people need to see the individuality, you know, before they'll really start to buy into it. Um, but again, it comes from experience. The more you do it and the more time you spend to focus on the individual, the more of an idea you're going to get on, you know, the best way to actually deal with these things, which link, links us into the second point, you know, listen to them, listen to the individual. And they might actually give you feedback and some some sort of clues as you go in, you know, give you a bit of information about their lifestyle, their diets, their hobbies, what sort of stuff do they do? Are they sitting at a desk all day, every day? They're probably going to be quite tight and not moving about very much, you know. Hobbies, do they like a game? Uh, do they like a, like a game of golf or a game of darts where you're thinking, okay, they maybe like a bevy or two while they're doing it as well, you know. And, and, and just little things like that. You can pick up so much just in conversation that sort of applies to other stuff that they probably don't even realize that they're giving you all of this information when they're talking, you know, they're just talking about themselves, but the more they're talking about themselves, the more you can start to absorb and sort of like, okay, I can use that in your training sort of thing, you know? Yeah. So again, listen to them and let them, let them feel listened to as well, because nobody's going to come back if they're trying to talk to you and you just keep talking over them and like, I know this, I know that, listen to me, that sort of thing, you know? So again, it's listening to them and start to pick up, pick up some clues about what their life outside the gym looks like as well. Cause that's as big a factor as the hour that they're going to be spending with you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, then knowing as much as you can before meeting the person I sort of mentioned earlier on, it makes it easier to initiate and maintain conversation while helping us better understand the person that we're working with. Like I mentioned earlier on, if someone's overweight and signed up to lose weight, using use scales to track their weight first rather than reaching for the skin fold calipers. Do you know what I mean? And just start grabbing areas that they're self-conscious about and, and sort of saying, okay, you've got this amount of fat here that we need to lose. Yeah. They're like, I kind of know that. That's why I'm here in the first place. I don't appreciate you poking us there. Thank you very much. You know, like, and it's, it's, they might appreciate that that's your job, but it's not going to leave them feeling um, the most comfortable in the world. You know? So again, knowing as much as you can about them beforehand is 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 massive and it might even just be like if they've signed up for an induction as they're filled in like maybe they've done their direct debit the week before and they've signed in the direct debit form maybe they've done a bit of a park you which is something that we're going to look at next week and the week after as well a park you which gives a little bit of basic information that you could look at and be like okay this person's name is such and such they're going to be roughly this age because I can say their date of birth, you know, uh, and they might say they do this for a living. They like this, they like that. And you can, before they've even met the person, you know, you can, you can, you can start to um, piece a couple of bits together and get an idea of what advice you're going to give them. Yeah. Um, okay, guys. So, and then of course, carrying out the fitness test itself, you know, of course we want the, we want the individual to feel as comfortable and relaxed as possible. And um, we're thinking about, of course, let them know what you're going to do beforehand. Like if you're going to put the, the skin fold calipers on them, let them know that you're going to be grabbing them around the waist. If you're going to be measuring the inside, like if you're going to be measuring their thigh, let them know that you're going to be doing that. And obviously don't just sort of get down on one knee and start like starting to get your tape measure around them and stuff like that. Um, give them give them a heads up what's coming and then nothing really catches them by surprise and takes them out of the blue. Thinking about your, your mannerisms, be polite, be as welcoming as you can. Um, good, good positive body language, you know, that sort of thing. Not just like standing with your hands stuffed in your pockets or sort of arms sort of folded across your chest. Now, there's a time and a place for it because you know what the, the international PT stance is, uh, like, arms folded across the chest like you'll see it so often it, it, it really is like but again <clears throat> thinking about where you're doing it when you're doing it um what relationship have you got with the individual as well 
thinking about personal space and hygiene, that's yours as well as theirs, you know, um, especially again, post lockdown where we've got to think, you know, not everybody's going to be ready for people, but people all up in their personal space. I know a lot of people that would rather wait till they've had two vaccines before the, 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 the mask, um, is going and, you know, this, the social distancing is going, you know, so again, everybody's going to be different. Um, and then like I mentioned earlier on keeping results, info, data, private and confidential, do you know what? It doesn't matter what it is. Um, you need to keep track of what their, say their weight is when they started with you. So that in three months time, you can show them and say, you've lost this much weight. That weight doesn't need to be somewhere that other people can access. Do you know what I mean? Like their mobile number, their emails, <laughs> You've got to keep it confidential, haven't you? Of course, you've got to keep it private, um, which is all in the name of being professional as well and just re- helping the client realise that they can trust you, I guess. Yeah, and that's up to them, isn't it, to tell people and whatever. Cheer. Of course of course it is. Of course it is. You're there to record their information. It's not your information, it's theirs. Um, and, and, and who it gets shared with is should, and should be entirely up to them as well, you know, for not just, of course, for security reasons, um, but of course, just in terms of confidence and, and just where people are at in their own fitness journey. Some people are happy talking about certain things, other people not so much, you know, so let them make that decision. Don't make it for them, especially while we're trying to develop that that trust and that bond as well, you know. Um, and other than that, guys, um, that that'll about do us for today. Um, I can't I can't believe how, how fast that's gone over the last two hours. But you know what they say: time flies when you're having fun. And um, of course, as always, we've got the uh, the fitness video will be in the description as well. Um, for you to go and check that out, and that will take you straight to the playlist as well. So if you're not particularly feeling the the sort of the, the workout that I've sort of suggested for the day, have a look through. You know, you might just be feeling like a little bit of a stretch or you might want to do like a core workout. They're, they're up there as well. So by all means, have a little bit of a look. Find one that, uh, that that's sort of, find one that you're feeling, you know, find one that you're really feeling doing today and then give it everything you've got. And of course, as always, let us know how you're getting on and how you're finding them as well. Um, as always, guys, reach out and drop me an email if you need to. My uh, my email's in the description. And of course, most of you have got it by now anyway. But if there's anything at all, don't hesitate to get in touch. Um uh, and then, guys, as always, as well, don't forget to just fill in that uh, that little short survey. It's not even 30 seconds, and it, it helps us out so much, you know. And, of course, your feedback's really important to us. We like to know what we're doing well and where we can um, suit you guys and deliver to you guys even better as well. Um, so, yeah, failing that, guys, if I don't hear anything from you, um, we'll be back next Tuesday exactly the same time, 10 or 12.30, uh, of course, including the fitness video as well. Um, do you have anything to add this week, buddy, or not? No, I just popped all them links in the um in the chat. So oh, excellent, buddy! Nice one. Um, yeah. So session nine next week. Session nine next week. We've got a uh, yeah, we've got a couple left to do, uh, and then of course we'll just be pulling everything together, wrapping everything up. And um, of course, if you've still got your circuit cards to do and to get over to me. Again, if you want to deliver them through a Zoom and talk me through them, or you can just take pictures and send them through email or through a Google Drive link if you want, however you want to do it. Um, but yeah, we'll get those over in the next couple of weeks and get them marked off, and then that's done. Um, and then, like I say, we've got we've got um, two sessions to do, nine and ten over the next couple of weeks, and then that'll be us. So, so yeah, guys, if there's anything that you want to go back and revisit, by all means do. All the links should still be working. Um, again, if they're not, let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll dig them out and get them over to you. But yeah, um, other than that, guys, if I don't hear anything from you, um, I will, of course, be back here same time next week to do it all again. As always, stay safe, look after yourself, look after each other. And of course, uh, yeah, constant vigilance. So they say, just be, uh, just be safe when we are out and about there. See you later, guys. Definitely. Have a good week. Take See you care. Guys.